the like of which we have never seen before. The day of reckoning is upon us. Bob Squad! So a very warm welcome to everybody and welcome to Wembley Arena, the press conference for the Day of Reckoning that's coming our way on December the 23rd from the Kingdom Arena in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. This event, this whole card has been put together at pretty breakneck speed. There are some huge names on that poster behind us. Big, big name alongside me as well, Fabio Wardley, British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion. Fabio, great to see you as always. You were out in Saudi at the end of October on the undercard of Fury against Nganu. So you got a flavour there of what this is all about, of, of how big it will be a couple of days before Christmas. Were you surprised at how quickly this has been done? Because we thought we knew what we were getting on December the 23rd, didn't we? Yeah. Which was Fury Usyk. Yeah, and then when that kind of fell out, I was left scratching my head a bit, but, but not for long. No, that's the thing. Um I think the Saudis, one thing about them, they're, they're full of surprises and if they want something done, it, it gets done normally because this is, I think we, we didn't know if we'd ever see kind of these, these kind of names on a card together, um, but then to be put together at such speed as well, and we've got a nice little, nice little treat just before Christmas. And just take us through your experience a few weeks ago, because it was a terrific performance, I thought. You got the job done against David Adelaide and you looked at very at ease with the situation all week. How much did you enjoy it over there? Yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic event. It really was. And that, that to be the one to open Riyadh season, I think they really put a lot into it to make it a spectacle, to show off and say, look, this is what we want to do over here. This is how we want to try and keep things moving. And they've really, really not let their foot off the gas, obviously, with this card as well. But... Just the, the events we were doing through the week and all the, the arrival events and the presses and things like that, they were all just so so big and so entertaining for us as fighters and for the fans as well. I guess this car was probably just a bit too soon for you, was it? <laughs> it's, it's only eight, nine weeks after the event, isn't it? But you look at some of the names on that on that poster, as I said, and knowing you, I wouldn't be surprised if you put your hand up for it anyway. Yeah, well, I think I enjoyed Christmas a little bit too much. I like a mince pie here and there, so maybe I thought, uh, let me have let me have five minutes, chill out, and then I'll see what's, um, what else is around. But credit to all the fighters that are getting ready for this card. And when you look at it, there are a few on the card who did box on October the 28th. Joseph Parker is the one who, who kind of screams out at us. He had a couple of names put to him, and then it turned into Deontay Wilder. Mm. We just had a quick chat with him, him and Andy Lee. And they're ready. They're ready to rumble. He's been nice and active, Joseph. He obviously hasn't been out of the gym for very long since that fight against Simon Keane. And they really, really fancy it. And that's the fight. AJ against Wallen as well, of course. But Dante Wilder against Joseph Parker is intriguing, isn't it? Because Wilder, since that second fight against Fury, which was hellacious, has had just one round in two years. Yeah, that's the thing. I think especially for, for Joe at the moment. Activity is going to be a key for him. He's been busy, he's been active. Even before this card, he, he'd had a few fights as well. So he's coming into it, especially coming off the win against Simon Keane as well. He's going to be very, have a lot of confidence going into that fight. And he's going to think that, hang on, Wilder might have a little bit of ring rust here so I can, I can get at him, stick it on him early, get close to him and put some pressure on him. But I saw Andy Lee and that in the back as well and they're extremely confident. So that one's shaping up to be a very interesting fight. AJ said that he wanted to box three times this year, Anthony Joshua. He's achieved that. We're going to see him against Otto Wallen, who's, who's a guy who's been over to the UK for lots of sparring. We're pretty familiar with him after that fight against Tyson Fury. He had a really good win against Murat Gassiev recently by split decision. I'm not saying he was definitely taken there to lose, but I feel like that was, that was the plan on, on behalf of Team Gassiev, obviously. That's, that's a dangerous fight because, you know, he could be a tricky guy. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think if you if you look at this card, I think the AJ fight is the potential banana slip because how quality Wallen has operated with with higher level opponents like Fury as well. So and then you've seen AJ come off. Obviously, Usyk's a different animal, but still south poor and still awkward to work with. So to see him get in now with Wallen and see how he performs, it, it may be it may be a very interesting one for him on the night. 
Daniel Dubois going straight back into the not quite so deep end against Terrell Miller as it was against Oleksandr Usyk. The fight against Usyk in Poland, I was over there for it and we all know what the talking point ended up being. Mm. But at the same time, I felt like he showed us quite a lot throughout that fight. I yeah. felt like Usyk won all the rounds, but Daniel was, was certainly competitive all the way through it. And I mean, I feel like he could take a lot from that and that Miller is, is maybe the right guy for him at this point. Yeah, I think they're both, not to say they're, they're climbing their way back in or building their way back in, I think Miller more so, definitely because of those that absence time and obviously he's got the, the one win on his belt since coming back against Lucas Brown, um, which is a an okay fight, but nothing that to really shout home about. So then for him to get in with Dubois and Dubois coming off that, that loss, but not a loss in any sense really to be ashamed of in any hall because he, he gave a fantastic account of himself and really, really put it on Usyk, who was obviously a, a well-known champion. So for him to get in with Miller, I think it's the right step for him, right, the right fight at the right time for him to still stay in contention. Oh, the main man. Okay, so we have uh, <laughs> we have a special guest, a guest oh, of so honour, who's going to stride in between the, between the pair of us. Frank, if you come in the middle, no, I'm not going nowhere. Make, make sure you don't, we're quite close you to the edge of the stage here, so let, let's, let, let's play this absolutely safe. Let's play this absolutely safe. Frank, good to see you. We were just saying, myself and Fabio, that we thought we knew what we were getting on December the 23rd. As it turned out, we didn't. No. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly this has all been brought together. It has, but everybody's worked very hard to make it happen. His Excellency, um, our team at Queensbury, his team works, I mean, extremely hard getting the contract signed and it was pulled together very quick, very professionally. And uh, here we are with a great event. We've got a fabulous event. I've been talking to a couple of the fighters in the last hour or so, and it almost seems to have been a case of, OK, so we've got this guy on the bill. Put your hand up if you want to fight him. Mm. Joseph Parker against Deontay Wilder, for example. He was expecting maybe Gilles Zhang, maybe somebody else, and Deontay Wilder was put to him, and immediately he just said, yes, fine, let's do it. That, that's what we need, isn't it? In it's, the sport in general. Look, it's the vision of, it's the vision of His Excellency that's made this happen. I mean, that's the, the real truth of it, truth of it all. It's his vision, and you know, once we got to go ahead between all of us, as I say, we, we got it, we got it together. And all these fighters, it's a tremendous opportunity for them because whoever's going to come out top here, some, you know, there's going to be winners and losers. The winners, hopefully, will wind up fighting each other. I'm sure they will. And the big prize at the end is when Tyson Fury and Usyk get it on. They'll be looking towards that because they'll want to be the guy that's fighting the winner of that. So it's a, this is a big story all the way through and it's going to be, it's, it's such a fabulous event and a great time for boxing because the fans, the ones who count, the fans are getting what they've always asked for, which are the big fights. And out of this fight, we've got, especially the two joint main events, if the two guys come through, there's nothing to stop that from happening. Okay, Frank. We need to let you go. Apparently, I think okay. you're. Uh, I think you're in demand Cheers. elsewhere. Well, I don't think you are. I know you are for, well, know for the rest that. of That's the. Not what my, what my wife for the rest says. of the evening. <laughs> Fabio, there's there's a couple of other fights on the card. There are five other fights on the card than the ones we touched on. But two that really fascinate me: Dimitri Bivol against Lyndon Arthur, mm. and Jay Pattaya against Ellis Zorro. Because in Lyndon Arthur, we've got a guy who's operating. He's IBO champion, but that, that's not at the same level as the other four major sanctioning bodies. So he's at that kind of domestic level. It's a good division. Ellis Zorro is heading towards that kind of British title level as well. And what's a really good division too. Mm. That opportunity for them is absolutely astonishing, really, isn't it? And as you're talking, we'll just usher Lyndon Arthur yeah. in. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think it's a, um, it's a, it's a crazy... It's a, it's a jump, definitely, but it, it just shows the character to see the opportunity in front of you and take advantage of them. And when things are given to you, whether you're, whether you're perfectly situated or not, I think that about fighters at least is they, they set everything aside and go, no, I can do this. And, and here's the stage and watch me do it, basically. That's it, Lyndon, isn't it? That's it, Dimitri Bivol, you know, he's the man. Him and Artur Bitterbeev in the, in the light heavyweight division, they're the ones that people look at. So just talk us through the timeline of this from your point of view. When did you... When was it mooted that this fight might happen and, and when did you finally agree? About three days ago, four days ago, the manager phoned me up and said, will you do this? <laughs> it's like, all right, fuck it, we're... Oh, sorry, shit, can't... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, continue, <we're>. continue. 
and, 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 and when you when you got the call, what was your kind of mindset towards it? Because you see, you hear the name Bivol, and yeah. you know how you know how big yeah. he is in the division. What was your your Look, thought process to it? I'm a I'm a I'm a Bivol fan. Probably my favorite fighter at the moment. But what do you do? Exactly. What what, what do you do? Mm. Like, what what am I supposed to say? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's one of them things in it. When the call comes, you just got to yeah, say yes. Yeah, you have to. You have to. You have to. I think so. We, you know. We, we know the, the task at hand. We know how good Bivol is. Everyone knows. It's not. It's not a secret to anyone. But I've got to go in there and try my hardest, isn't it? Yeah, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. I guess it's the kind of situation, or, or people like to describe these fights for fighters who are in your position as being not that you can't lose because professionals don't look at it like that. But there's no real pressure on you. Is that fair, or do you, do you feel pressure yeah, going into believe, this? Yeah, no, I believe. I get what. Yeah, I, feel, I don't feel like there's pressure on me like there will be on before. If he has a bad performance against me, I can only win in that situation. Um, it kind of a bit of a win-win situation kind of thing. Like I, I go in there and, and I and I beat Bivo. I've changed my life for years, forever and ever and ever. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of them things again. I mean, Fabio, this, this is kind of, this is what boxing is, isn't it? You, you, you work and you work and you work and you work and There'll be days and times and fights where you feel like it's not worth it, where you feel like it's, you know, am, am I, you know, is the is the juice worth the squeeze, basically? Mm. But you stay in it and you get this yeah. kind of opportunity. It's amazing. Yeah, I think that's the thing, especially for boxers. We're always, always waiting for that phone to ring in terms of that that one big opportunity because we're always sitting there thinking, like, I just give me my one chance, give me my one moment, let me let me have a go at it and watch and watch what I can do. And I think that's for. For obviously here as well, and some of the other fighters on the card, that's what that's what they've got. They've had the call and they've thought, "No, watch, watch what I can do. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something on the night." So I did notice as you came in, there was maybe a little bit of a limp there. I'm hoping that there's 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 yeah, no be fine. that'll be fine. Should come be fine, right. yeah, should be fine. Yeah, yeah. What's Pat said to you about this? Pat's Pat. Pat's always gonna be Pat. Um, but Pat's behind me, so. That's all we need. Pat Barrett is trainer I was referring to there. Linda, thanks very much for joining no us. Problem, thank um, you, we will we will let you go. Good to see you as always. <laughs> Lyndon Arthur taking on Dimitri Bivol for Bivol's WBA World Light Heavyweight title. And that was just a pure coincidence that he arrived just as we were talking about that because the mindset of it is is kind of fascinating, mm. isn't it? And for Ellis, Ellis Zorro, who will have a chat with at some point as well, I'm sure. It's the similar situation, but but bigger because of the level he's been at mm. and the fact that Opatia, we saw what he did against Jordan Thompson mm. a few weeks ago. It's it's in no other sport really do you get the chance to make that kind of leap. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Because in in a lot of other sports, there's obviously a big area of it in boxing, but you really have to really build your way through to that that top moment for you. But in and sometimes in boxing, that that phone can ring and it can come very quickly, and you you as a boxer have to sit yourself down and go no we're going to do this and you may even have some members of your team around you and things like that there's been moments in my career where people around you have said oh i don't know if maybe that's a little step too far or maybe that's not right for you but i think it goes to show especially with a lot of fighters on this card that the self-belief in them is is in a different place yeah absolutely absolutely and and when you look at let's have a, look, a little look at, at wilder and joshua because in terms of self-belief i think people might feel like that's the difference between them these days. Mm. The Wilder still has his, because we saw the way he boxed against Fury in that third fight, after what happened to him in the second fight. He didn't seem any different. What that fight might have taken away from him, we can't really be sure yet, because we've only seen one round from him since. Yeah. But the, what, the question that people are asking of Anthony is, is that self-belief, that willingness to put yourself in danger and roll the dice, is that is that still there? I mean, is that how you look at it with a pair of them? Yeah, I think so. I think I think it's hard for anything to really throw Wilder off his off his self belief game at all. I think he's he's gonna be always very sure of himself regardless of what happens or what goes on because having that equalizer in your right hand always is gonna always put a lot of confidence in your heart. But with AJ, I think there's a lot of question marks thrown around what's where's he at kind of mentally and things like that. But I think especially going into this this event and this fight, where he seems to be as of late, I think it's only going to spur him on more, and he's going to look at that and be like, "Okay, this this is." He kind of almost hasn't had to do it for a little while, but prove everyone wrong and go, "Okay, let me let me show you, not necessarily the old AJ, but 
let me show you what I've still got in the tank and what's still there. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? I think he's... I mean, we'll speak to him later, hopefully. I think he's kind of sick of, of being asked that of being asked that question. And he just wants to get in there now and prove to people that that he does still that he does still have that. A fighter we saw who was on the card with you at the end of October, who features on this one too, Arsenal Beck Mahmoudov. Mm. What did you make of him? I, I kind of enjoyed speaking to him during the week because he looks absolutely terrifying. I was going to say, I think you could give him the tag as like the scariest man in boxing because he just looks dangerous. He looks like he could go off at any minute and chairs are going to go and tables are going to go. But when you speak to him, he's, he's, he's nice as pie. He's a really nice guy. So it's, it's interesting to see them two different dynamics on, on when he gets in the ring or when he's outside it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He had a really, really good win. He's up against Agit Kabayel, who has been mooted for a big fight for a while now. A former European champion beat Derek Chisora a few years ago, but that kind of really sprang him to prominence. Uh, we will usher in. Usher in the trader of Joseph Parker, Mr. Andy Lee. Still sharp, <laughs> still, still very it, much still in shape. It. Still very much in shape. Still got the, that right hook. I don't like to be too close to it, to be honest with you. I'm just about out of range here, possibly. <laughs> we were chatting about an hour ago, Andy, and I kind of suggested that for a trainer, maybe Deontay Wilder is the number one challenge because of the fact that, as he terms it himself, you have to be switched on for every second in there against him. Switch off for one second. He has to be perfect for one second, and it's all over. Yeah. But it's... I've studied, obviously, been working with Tyson. I've studied John Taylor a lot. And I can't say it's quite simple to avoid it. Tyson's knocked... You look at the knockdowns Tyson had in the first fight. It was when he was getting low and turning his head. Twice he was hit behind the head, and mm. twice he went down. The f in the third fight when Tyson went down, it was because he got careless and wanted to get the job over and rushed up with the, rushed with the job and wasn't disciplined and he walked to Deontay with his hands high and had a passive... And that's when a lot of his knockouts have come too. You drift back, you take the distance. And you have to be switched on, you have to have athletic legs, you have to have this, this leg always on the toe. You can't heel step ever. You have to be on your toe. And then you drift. High left hand, and Hoffa does the job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny you, you, you say that, we chuckle, but it's... But it's, I, it's all in the eyes. But boxing in general, and heavyweight boxing particularly, you prepare as best you can, you get in there, and you do the best you can. But really, when the bell goes, you, you can tell me if I'm right or not, whatever happens, happens. You can't really control it. Yeah, there's only so much in a fight you can plan for. And yeah, I think... You know, in your last fight, you definitely had a plan. Yeah. From the where, where yeah, yeah. go, it was... Like, Adelaide was... Listen, no... David's a good friend of ours. He's trained with us plenty of times. But he was in the gym with us in Saudi, training and using the gym with his coach, Ferd. And he looked he looked, he looked, looked really, really good. Mm. But from the, day, from the first bell, you had that plan. Yeah, we had a plan. And it was there It was there to be stuck to as well. And mm. with, with some fighters, I think I was not to say fortunate in the sense but with Adelaide I don't think he really had the the IQ of how to work around that or maybe his him and his team didn't put together the best plan to try and combat me but when you are stepping in with a much higher level guys maintaining that plan is always sometimes difficult because they may come up with their own ideas and things so especially for someone like Wilder as well you have to be so switched on with all the time it's about working with that plan in your mind but also when things go a little bit south a little bit left like you saw with the Fury as well. He never planned to get dropped in his fights at all, but got up and, and mm. the one where he came back and still won the round and things. So there's always their moments where they're going to creep up in a fight and you've mm. got to just have the, the wherewithal to, to stick to something new. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's through repetition and, and drilling it every day. But then there's also room for improvisation and sometimes you have to not make it up as you go along, but you have to, yeah, you have to improvise and you have to like yeah, be able to out. adjust. adjust um, well, listen, Dante is very unorthodox, and if, like, I, I watched some clips of him on the, on in, on Instagram and stuff, and I like, if this guy didn't, if you didn't know who he was, you'd think he was a novice, because his legs are wrong, mm, his yeah. hands are wrong, he's everything, but he can knock you out. You know, that's <laughs> he's a conundrum because you look at his body, body shape, thin, thin waist, wide shoulders, but very skinny legs. That that unorthodox style he has in terms of him being not well drilled in an amateur sense or anything like that. Does that make him in any sense more difficult to prepare for or more, uh, he's obviously unorthodox, mm. but is, does that make him more unpredictable in spaces or? 
I think he can go for you and then go against you. Because mm. he will. He he's, he's not that nervous. Not that level of like where you know when you you know when you win with a novice and you're fainting them and they don't react. Yeah, that's and the, like what's this I guy? Do? And that's then he just throw a punch. From, he just throw a punch from anywhere. Like in preparation yeah, for fights, yeah, I'll yeah. spar some some not like pros or some lower level guys, and I'll find them almost more difficult oh, to work with. Yeah. Because I'm like I'm not sure how you're going to work here. Yeah. So I was wondering. With him, is that does that transfer? Or is it the same thing? Or? Yeah, that's what. I listen, he's a great. Enig he's an enigma, as a person, yeah, and definitely. everyone's style, uh, in the, as a fighter, is reflected as in their personality, as a and their character, um, and that's that's how he fights, is how he acts. You know what I mean? And he'll shock Joe. Out, he'll probably scream bomb squad in Joe's face in a second. <laughs> <and we'll, laughs> Yeah, I mean that, that that absolutely is him, isn't it? What one thing I do wonder about with him, and and obviously you're preparing for the the best version. Fighters tell me that every time you go in there, you leave a bit of yourself in the ring. It just depends how much. That third fight against Fury was, I mean, it was savage. Mm. It was savage, and he's had one round since. Yeah. We don't know, do we, how much that might have taken no, away from listen, him? Listen, and we're not, not clutching the straws that we're we're expecting the man to be fresh, but. My biggest thing is inactivity for him, for Deontay, and the stars aligning for Joseph, having three fights already this year. Um, and Joe's invested in himself from the start of the year. He's, he's like, when he's not been fighting, he's had George Lockhart with him, brought him to New Zealand, paid for him every week. And that's, that's a big investment, to be eating the right nutritional f foods and training with Boxing Pacific conditioning. I think it's made a big difference in Joe's career. And just while we've got you here, what do you make as Otto Wallin as an opponent for, for Anthony Joshua? It, mm. It's a fight that's been mooted for, for a while and it never ended up happening, but he's a big, tall southpaw, six foot five southpaw, and most people will say nobody needs one of them in their life. But Anthony Joshua has chosen to, to fight him. Third fight of the year too, which is, which is a good mm. thing. It's a good thing for him, yeah, activity. Um, and he's spoken a lot about it, Joshua. But this, this is a potential banana skin for him. And he's got, like, I don't know what they're thinking and who's, who's you know, the brain box behind it because Wilder and Joshua will be fighting now. If there are any, just get in there and fight each other. Everyone's waiting for this fight. You're not going to be as good as any, any better. If anything, the two fights you're about to have are going to potentially ruin your careers or take a lot out of you, in, even in winning it. Because we, not, listen, Joseph, you know Joseph, he's been to the well many times. Yeah. He was not gonna lie down for anyone. Joe's gonna go in there and throw his hands. And Joe's punching extremely hard. And Joe's gonna, and Wallen's seriously solid, good fundamental mm -hmm. European fighter. Yep. And a southpaw, like you said, with Joey Gamash in his corner, one of the best boxing men in the, in the game. This is, this is crazy, crazy. They're, they're risking it all. We're not taking no risk, Wallen knows. We've got it all to gain. They're mm. taking the risk. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Because if you if you could get the win, then you, you take his place. It's uh, it's it snakes and ladders boxing, isn't it? You know, you, you beat somebody, you move upwards, they move sideways or down. Yeah. So, listen, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's <laughs> well, a we're crazy, crazy. Wallen Parker, 2024, yeah. the bill. Yeah. They, they both do what their jobs, and it could be it could change things around for the new year. Mm. We were just talking about the the two fights between. Jao Pataira and Ellis Zorro and Dimitri Bivol and Lyndon Arthur and Lyndon came up and had, had a quick chat and those two kind of fascinate us both really because on the one hand you could say that the right hand side in Arthur and Zorro don't really have anything to lose but on the other hand it's a massive step up against fighters at a really really high level as a coach you have to be lots of different things psychologist mentor father figure all of that how would you go about preparing a fighter for that kind of challenge because it's I mean it's it's unusual like not to, not to be down on him but I think it's a it's a much tougher situation for, Z for Zaro than it is for Arthur because he's been there thereabouts Arthur you know he's and he has a style I don't know maybe you look at the Marcus is it Marcus McDonald who fought Bivol before he had a good fight with him. Bivol's a boxer and, and so is Arthur and he has a great job Arthur and that will always get him through. But this Jai Patau is just, he's a phenom isn't he? You know, his legs, he's got some of the best legs, feet in terms of distance control and springing in is, 
and he's spiteful too. And, and as I talked about, fighters' characters and personalities reflecting a style. You see him here, he's got the biggest chip on his shoulder walking around the place. He's flew in today from New Zealand. He is pissed off. He's flying back out tonight or tomorrow. He, is, he does not want to be here, but he knows he has to be. No, I mean, that, that by all, I don't know him, but by all accounts, that's him. You know, he, he uses that, you know, he's always got that feeling of, you don't think I should be here, do you? You don't think I'm good enough. And, and, yeah. and you haven't said anything to him, but that's just, <laughs> that's just how he is all the time. Simon Keane was a bit like that, your guy yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, we thought that, but I later, he was walking around like this all the time. Did you see him in that room? Yeah, I did. I did but see you know him. what happened? I wondered if I had a problem with him or said something bad about Apparently, him. Apparently, he didn't have his glasses and he couldn't see, so he's walking around like this. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had a bad... I don't know. He was sound after it. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about you, Fabio? When you back out? Uh, well, that's the question, isn't it, mate? That's the question. But I've had a couple of weeks off, a bit of time yeah, off, well so deserved. we're just going to... Um, Christmas after. Hang about. Yeah, enjoy yeah. some of Christmas, hang about, and then we'll see what's, um, see what's coming up in the new year. Solomon Dacos? Mm, maybe. It's a good fight. It's a great fight. It is a good fight. It is a good fight. There's, there's, there's plenty of options out there for you. Once you, you already had that British title, but with a Commonwealth title now, and I think three top 15 rankings. That's yeah, right, isn't it? So. What do you think about it? You're gonna like, you know, there's the Clark, Dakers, these guys, or are you gonna go up? No, I think I've got at least one more. Because we were saying Wardley. Parker. Yeah, no, I did. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were just trying to fight throw me straight in. I was like, whoa, oh, what's going on? Um, but yeah, no, I think I've got at least one more British level. Because um, there's still there's still some good fights to be had here. And I'm, like, I don't need to just run off into the international scene straight away. Like, it's nothing, there's, it's always going to be there. So if I can get some good domestic fights off as well while I'm still here, then I, I will. I'm not, I'm not shy from them at all. They're some of the best ones. So I like them. So we can, um, we can still mix around and yeah. do them. So I just, that. <laughs> just one more before we let you go. Another thing that's quite unusual about this is that lots of boxing's kind of big houses are all coming together under one roof, yeah. hands across the water, which um, we don't normally see, but it's good, isn't it? Because this is what we need. We need more of, because it does seem to me that in the UK anyway, in recent times, things have got fractured to the point where it's been quite unhelpful. It's, listen, this is what boxing needs, but don't get it wrong. They aren't doing this out of, out of any goodwill. <laughs> the one reason this is happening is the one reason only. Money. Money. Eddie Hunt and Frank Warren together, hugging and kissing, shaking hands. <laughs> Money. Uh, well, it's happening. Well, it's going. happening. And that's, that, I've that's just lost uh, my job. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you all. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you get yourself in any more trouble, we'll let you go. We'll let you go. Andy, always good to see you. Cheers. Very much looking forward to that fight between between Deontay Wilder and Joseph Parker. As we said at the beginning, that's the one that kind of, you know, leaps off the page at you. We are expected to get going behind us fairly shortly. There's a lot of people to get up onto that top table. Our MC Dev Sardi there, just looking very pensive, sat in the middle. This is uh, not a straightforward job for him. He did sterling work out in Saudi Arabia. So there's plenty of people to get into position. Deontay Wilder arrived a while ago, I haven't really seen him backstage. But I heard a bomb squad midway yeah. through that, did you? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, I did, yeah, I did, I did. So I thought, oh, Joshua, he's in the building then, he's arrived. I think Anthony Joshua um, wasn't in the building uh, quite as early as, as Deontay Wilder. But Dev Sardi, I think, is, I think is poised and ready to go. So let's hand over to our Master of Ceremonies for the press conference, Dev Sardi. Turn the music. Hello, hello, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here today for today's groundbreaking press conference. We've got a huge event in Riyadh on December the 23rd, and we're now going to welcome to the stage some of the stars involved in this huge event. Let's first welcome heavyweight contender Junior Farr. All right, let's keep it moving as we wait for Junior Far. Let's welcome to the stage two-time European heavyweight champion, Ajit Kabayal. All right. 
let's welcome up to the stage the IBF World Cruiserweight Champion, Jai Opataya. All right, now let's welcome to the stage the IBO World Light Heavyweight Champion, Lyndon Arthur. All right, now let's welcome to the stage the WBA World Light Heavyweight Champion, Dimitri Bivol. All right, now let's welcome to the stage Heavyweight contender, Junior Farr. <laughs> All right, on to our next heavyweight contender. Let's welcome Mark Damori. All right, now let's bring to the stage another heavyweight IBF mandatory world heavyweight title challenger, Philip Hergovic. All right, now let's welcome to the stage one of the hardest working promoters out there of Salita Promotions, Dimitri Salita. Let's now welcome to the stage the former WBA heavyweight champion, Daniel Dynamite Dubois. All right, now let's welcome to the stage his opponent on December 23rd from America, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Okay, another heavyweight contender. Let's please welcome to the stage Otto Valin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome to the stage the former WBO World Heavyweight Champion, Joseph Parker. Okay, let's now welcome to the stage longtime boxing manager and indeed the manager of Deontay Wilder, Shelley Finkel. I hate him.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now let's welcome to the stage the WBO European Cruiserweight Champion, Ellis Zorro. Manhattan, Brooklyn originally. Okay. I know you're not. <laughs> yeah, I stay in Manhattan. I'm from Sweden, but I stay here. Now let's welcome to the stage the chairman of Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearn. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. How about you? Um, Upper East Side, 88th Street. Okay. You're but um, all right, you're right. it's been my whole life in Brooklyn and in Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's great. Okay, well, that's Eddie Hearn. Now let's welcome to the stage Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. <laughs> My grandkids are there all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, they like it. Love it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I'm, I'm Making noise, isn't he? <laughs> Hello, Frank. <laughs> All right, now let's welcome to the stage the former two time unified world heavyweight champion. Please welcome Anthony Joshua. The Doofers, um, Lou was my partner when I started my first fight. I had five 84 Olympians, four became champions. It was Melzer Taylor. Bernie All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's welcome to the stage the former long reigning WBC World Heavyweight Champion, Deontay Wilder. Okay, full table here. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are joining us around the world, you are very welcome for today's monumental press conference. Before we begin, there is a very special individual here, over there to my right, over there to your left, the chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency, Turkey Al al Sheikh, who would like to say a few words. If they help us, and I thank all the 12 promoter who was with us today uh, for everything, and I am happy to be here. And please help us to deliver to the market good fight because I am fan and you are all fans and around the world. The last thing, in this day, we will try to be 
deliver it to the people with good price in the platform, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Well, for boxing fans who have been following the rumors the last few days, we've got great news. It's true. Look at this top table. On December 23rd, there is a day of reckoning in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to continue Riyadh's season. A huge night coming up. A galaxy of stars, world champions, contenders will all descend upon the Kingdom Arena in Saudi Arabia, the second boxing event of this Riyadh season. And we cannot wait for this one. The co-main events, the return of the former unified, two-time unified world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua, taking on Sweden's tricky southpaw, tall southpaw, Otto Wallin. And in co-main event status, the return of the long-reigning, hard-hitting WBC, former WBC world heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder, taking on former WBO world heavyweight champion, the, the reignited Joseph Parker. But as you can see from this top table here, there's so much more than that. It, there's so many fights here that could just headline their own event. Top to bottom, this may be the most talent-laden, strongest card ever put on in the history of boxing. That is what we're dealing with here. It's December 23rd. It's the second boxing event of Riyadh season, and it's in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Well, this historic fight card will be presented to fans worldwide by the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in conjunction with Frank Warren's Queensbury, the NEC, Gold Star Promotions and Seller. And on behalf of Queensbury, we would like to say what a privilege it is to be working again on such an incredible night as we continue this year's Riyadh season. And we'd like to express our heartfelt thanks to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And our thanks to His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Turkey Al Al Sheikh. And of course, a huge thanks to all of the teams at the GEA, Riyadh Season, and Seller as we continue to work together to deliver special nights in the kingdom. Very shortly, we'll be hearing from each of these superstars up here on the top table. But before we begin, I'd just like to take a moment to discuss our wonderful hosts on December 23rd. And Riyadh season has simply become uh, one of the most anticipated global events of the year. People travel from all over the world to come and have a look at what's going on in Riyadh season. There's more than 12 zones, each offering very unique experiences. There's live concerts, sporting events, uh, some of the best fine dining out there. And of course, we commenced Riyadh season this year with the Battle of the Baddest. Just a few weeks ago, we saw yeah. world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury take on lineal MMA heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou in an event that the world has been talking about for weeks and weeks and will be talking about for decades and decades to come. For those who have already had the privilege of visiting Riyadh, you will know that there is something very magical in the Saudi Arabian air. And for those who are going to go, well something very special awaits you. This event on December 23rd is everything that Riyadh season is about. It's big time. Let's bring in Hall of Fame uh, boxing promoter to kick things off, Frank Warren. At the start of the, the relationship with His Excellency, you talked about what a, a game changer this was going to be. I think boxing fans watching this around the world will look at this top table, look at some of the people on here together at the same time, and they would have to agree with you. Tell us how this event came together. It looks like a, an awful lot of hard work. It was, but just before we do that, I'd like to thank His Royal Highness, and I would like to thank His Excellency Turkey Al Al, -Al Sheikh uh, for making this event, which is in the Riyadh season, possible for show, which will showcase the be best in boxing, along with a general ent entertainment authority of Saudi Arabia, Another person I would like to personally thank for opening the door to this huge opportunity for boxing is the Gypsy King, the number one heavyweight in the world, Tyson Fury. A big thank you to all the team seller, led by Dr. Rakan, Spen Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions, our team at Queensbury, for putting this all together under a huge pressure to get 16 fight contracts for these type of fights together 
and done quickly is really, really hard and it takes a credible, incredible amount of work and dedication to do it. I thank you all. In addition to this historical moment for world boxing, all under the vision of His Excellency, 16 fighters across all of these fights, in addition to the Queensbury and Gold Star and the 12 co-promoters in this event. This is historical. It is a game changer. And you know what changed the game? The first fight we did opening Riyadh season. That was the key to the door. That has changed the whole face of boxing. And this could be the norm, and I believe it will be the norm. We're going to see these great fights. We're seeing people all like-minded working together now. We're all working together to give, make these fights happen. And you know why we're doing it? We're doing it for the fans, because they're the ones who count. These are great fights. These are the fights that the, the, the world wants to see, and we will be delivering them on a regular basis. And it's all down to this man sitting up there. His vision has made this happen. Make no bones about it. He has made this happen, and we're delighted to be all be a part of it. And I think I speak for all of us from that perspective. It's, it's a, just a fantastic situation for boxing to be into. And it's going to be, as I said, a game changer. Just on that, Frank, I mean, we were, we were there in Riyadh a, f a few weeks ago, uh, certainly an experience I, I will never forget. Is Riyadh becoming the home of big time boxing? That's what it feels like. Well, it is. I mean, it's a, it's a new destination and it will be. There's no doubt about it. There's big commitment for fights to happen in the future. It's been shown just within a course of a few weeks what's been, what's been put together here and what happened prior to that. There is a huge commitment, and that is brilliant for the sport. You know, boxing's a fantastic sport. It's one of the best sports in the world. You know, for me, it is the best sport in the world, and it's got some of the best athletes in the world, if not the best. It's the, you know, it's the most, it's, it's the most dramatic sport of all of them. And these fights that everybody's been driving me mad about, Eddie mad about, you know, all the promoters along here saying, why isn't this not happening? They're going to happen. They will happen now. And that is going to be just something special. Thank you very much, Frank. We'll, uh, we'll come back to you for, for various fighters that you've got involved. Um, let's start talking to the fighters involved in some of these fights. Let's talk about some of these fights. Uh, let's begin with, there's a Q unbeaten Cuban heavyweight Frank Sanchez takes on Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, New Zealand's heavyweight giant, Junior Farr. The fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Gold Star Promotions, Seller and Debella Entertainment. Now we're gonna start with Junior Farr uh, as Frank Sanchez can't be with us. Junior, uh, a big moment to shine, a big stage for you, big opportunity. Tell us what's going on in the mind of Junior Farr. In the mind of Junior Far. Well, <laughs> tell you what, first of all, this is just a great, great um, opportunity that I have to really showcase my skills and just to be on this massive stacked card, probably the best card that the world has ever seen. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking the opportunity with both hands. Um, Frank Sanchez is a, is, is a great fighter, great technical uh, heavyweight contender. Um, I know what I'm in for, and I'm there to basically steal the night and just put on the performance of my lifetime. That's what I'm planning to do. Well, Junior, look, Frank Sanchez isn't here, but I'm sure with the rest of the world, he is watching this press conference. Do you have a message for Frank Sanchez? What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, train hard. I'll, uh, I'll see you December 23rd. Thank you very much, Junior. Nice message as well. Let's continue with another very intriguing heavyweight fight between two unbeaten heavyweights, unbeaten Russian giant Arslan Bek Makhmudov, a very scary looking man, is taking on two time European heavyweight champion Ajit Kabayal. Uh, Ajit Kabayal is here, but Makhmudov is not here. So we're going to speak to Kabayal. Um, Ajit, it feels like you have been on the cusp of big, big fights, linked to big, big fights for a, quite a while now, and now you've got the chance on a huge stage to go and make a name for yourself. Talk, talk to us. Uh, first about uh, thank you for the hospitality. Um, you know, my English is not perfect. I hope uh, you understand. Uh, yes, it's a big opponent. I'm ready for the 23 uh, December. Uh, this is a very big, op uh, very big opponent and very good organization. I'm happy and I'm ready. 
And this Mahmoudov guy, oh, I saw him box a couple of weeks ago in, uh, in Riyadh. He's a scary looking guy. He made a lot of, uh, he, t- he made quite an impression. Did he make an impression on you when you watched him? Yes, yes, I watched the fight. It's a very good opponent, I say. He's a very uh, aggressive guy. Um, and uh, yes, it was, uh, this fight was a very good fight. Maybe this is uh, two guys with a zero, not lose. And um, I hope this fight was a very, very two tough guys. And if he's watching this, anything you want to say to him? Do you have a message? I have Arsenal a message back? for uh, Mahmoudov. Yes, Mahmoudov, I hope you train good and uh, we will see you on 23 December in Saudi Arabia. I'm ready. Okay, thank you very much. Ajit Kabayal, cracking fight coming up. Two unbeaten heavyweights, December 23rd. Let's continue with a clash of two unbeaten cruiserweights. The IBF and Ring Magazine champion from Australia, Jai Opataya, takes on Britain's unbeaten Ellis Sorrow. Uh, this fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Gold Star Promotions and Seller in association with Matchroom Boxing and Tasman Fighters. And at this point, for the first time, I'm going to bring in promoter Eddie Hearn. Um, Eddie, this is quite surreal. I didn't think I'd, didn't think I'd be at a top table asking you questions, but the world of boxing keeps moving, and, and here we are. You've got a few fighters on this show. Anthony, of course, who we'll come to later. But Dimitri Bivol, Jai Pattaya, big opportunity for them to maybe set up things for the future. Yeah, firstly, Dev, thank you. Um, it is surreal. I think uh, it shows you the, the vision and, and the strength and the plans of His Excellency. Thank you very much for asking our fighters to be part of this incredible event. Um, I think Frank touched on it earlier, collaboration. Um, We all want the sport of boxing to grow. We have our rivalries, we're competitive, but we also want the best opportunities for our fighters. And we'll come on to AJ later, but for Dimitri Bivol, the number one 175 pounder in the world, and Jai Apatai, the, the best cruiserweight in the world, this was an opportunity to be part of something very special. I've never seen a card come together at speed like this. And uh, thank you to, of course, His Excellency, but also to George Warren, uh, to Spencer, and the, the teams at Queensbury and Matchroom that work very quickly to make these fights happen. And it just shows you when you want to make fights, when you have a vision, when it is in the best interest of the fighters, we can get it done. So I think it's refreshing to see the change, perhaps, in, in the way boxing works here today. And I think the event on December 23rd is the best event I've ever seen in the sport of boxing. So, firstly, when you talk about Jai Apatai, he came over recently, and he's, you know, which, unfortunately for Jordan Thompson, has to be called a demolition job. I think it was a performance that grabbed the attention of the UK fans, the global fans. A shout-out to Mick Francis, who has worked tirelessly in the career of Jai Apatai to get him to where he is. This opportunity for him is, is life-changing. Um, Ellis Zorro is a, a great young undefeated fighter, but we believe Jai Apataya is the king of the cruiserweight division. And if you haven't seen him fight yet, tune in and, and be part of Riyadh's season on December 23rd because this kid is very special. Thank you, Eddie. We'll come back to you on the, the Dimitri Bivol fight. Frank, I'm going to bring you in here. Uh, Ellis Zorro is, is your man. Big opportunity for him. Uh, you've only had him for a few fights now, and, and here he is right in the deep end against Jay Pattaya. Tell us about this fight. I will do. Just before we did that, very remiss of me. I did not include uh, our thanks to Bob Arum and Top Rank are also involved in the show, so <laughs> apologise to them. So, listen, for... Ellis, this is a massive opportunity. You know, this is a a chance you get. They come along once in a while, and he's he's worked very hard. He's been very diligent. Um, He's undefeated. He can punch. There's no doubt about that. I think they're both big punchers. So I think we're going to get something a little bit special on the night between the two of them. And he knows what he's got to do to become world champion. And... I'm sure Jai knows what he's got to do to keep his title, but I think we're going to get a really, really good quality fight between them. Well, let's bring in Ellis Soro. Frank says you know what you've got to do on December 23rd. Do you? Yeah, this is arguably the best cruiserweight in the world at the moment, so definitely got to be on my aim game. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. This is the biggest event I've ever been involved with and probably will ever be involved with. Um, So, yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm looking forward to it. Have you seen things in Opatire that you think you can exploit? Did you watch the Jordan Thompson fight? Have you seen anything in his career where you're thinking, hey, maybe I can have some success there? 
Not really. I've, I've, I have watched his fights. Um, he's got a good boxing IQ. Obviously, he's a southpaw. Um, he's quick. He's powerful. I haven't really seen any loopholes in him just yet. That doesn't mean that there isn't any. Um, but yeah, I can't focus on what he's done to other opponents. You know, styles make fights. So yeah, that's what it is. So Jordan Thompson was unable to get the job done that night. Uh, what, why are you different to Jordan Thompson? Why can you cause more of a problem? Like I said, I just think styles make fights. Uh, Jordan's a lot bigger, a, m a much bigger target than I am. Um, and we're just different fighters, so I can't necessarily look at that and, 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 and take much from that, if I'm being honest, Dev. Okay, thank you, Ellis. Let's bring in the IBF and Ring Magazine Cruiserweight World Champion, one of the best fighters out there, Jay Opatia. Uh, Jay, it feels like you know, getting a stage like this, you are starting to get the rewards for years and years of hard work. Tell us how you're feeling heading into this one. Um, you know, there's a big part of me that's so grateful to be a part of this card, but the other half's like, shit, you know, like I deserve to be here. I earned my spot here. And, um, you know, 23rd of December, I remind them, you know, the best cruiserweight on the planet. Well, you beat a Brit last time out in, in Jordan Thompson. Do you think you can do a, a similar job on Ellis Sorrow? Eddie Hearn referred to it as a demolition job. Can you do a similar one? Um, and we just got to prepare how we prepare. You know, we got to get in those trenches train hard, and anyone that is in front of me, we got to beat. So that's, a, that's all we think of. And I'm hearing that you're going to be in the, in the Tyson Fury camp. Is, is that correct? You're going to help him prepare for Alexander Usyk? Um, yeah, they've reached out for sparring. Um, you know, when that happens, it happens. But, you know, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on 23rd of December. You know, I've got a new mission in front of me, so let's get it done. Well, Ellis Soro is just over there, right next to you. Is there anything you want to say to him? Any message you have for him there, just sat there? Any message I have? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm just ready. 23rd of December, man, this is what I do. And I'll remind everyone, the king of the cruiserweight division. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Jay Opatia. Two very respectful, unbeaten cruiserweights. Let's now move to the light heavyweight division where, again, simply one of the best fighters out there, pound for pound star, WBA light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bivol takes on the IBO world champion Britain's Lyndon King Arthur. Now the fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions and Seller in association with World of Boxing Promotions and Vassarman Boxing. Um, Eddie, I'm going to come to you here first on, the, on this fight. Dimitri Bivol is someone you, you have long championed. Big chance for him on a big stage to really make an impression on December 23rd. Yeah, I, th I think Dimitri is an established pound for pound great in boxing. I think uh, the job that Andrei Rybinski and, and Vadim Kornilov did with World of Boxing has, has been incredible. And it took him a long time to get his breakout fight. That came against probably, well, unquestionably at the time, the pound for pound number one. Saul Canelo Alvarez, the victory over him from Dimitri Bivol was... Does that still hurt, by the way? No, it isn't. You know, we, we were working with both, but Frank Smith, uh, who can't be here today, is, is Dimitri's biggest, biggest supporter. And Vadim did a great job, and that win was iconic in boxing. Um, a great win as well against uh, Gilberto Ramirez last time out, some time out with injury, and now back in a great fight. I'm so pleased to see Lyndon Arthur get the opportunity. You know, this is... Uh, such a great opportunity for so many British fighters, and I'm glad that it was given to Lyndon Arthur, who's, you know, you've seen him in great fights against Anthony Yard, winning and losing, um, and he'll give it everything with, with Pat Barrett and the team on December 23rd. But for Dimitri Bivol, we all know what he wants. He wants the winner of Artur Betabiev against Callum Smith for Undisputed. I'm sure that's a fight that will be discussed in due course, but Lyndon Arthur got other plans, and I think it's a great matchup. Thank you, Eddie. Well, let's bring in Lyndon Arthur, the IBO world light heavyweight champion. Lyndon, for, for, for many fans, this seemed to come out of nowhere. Did, did this come out of nowhere for you? Were you expecting an opportunity like this to knock on your door? Uh, it kind of came out of nowhere, but you know, it is what it is. This is boxing and these, these, this is what happens in boxing. You have to um, take these kind of opportunities when they come, so. Big, big stage. Um, this, you know, you call yourself Lyndon King Arthur. You can become the king on December 23rd. What are your thoughts about this fight and about Dimitri Bivol? Everyone knows how good Bivol is. Um, it's no, it's no, um, it's no like secret. You know, we beat Canelo and stuff like that. But I have to do what I have to do, and I have to come in here and, and try and upset the um, 
the plans that he's got for the future. So I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this big event. There's a lot of main main event cards on it, fighters on it. Sorry, so I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. And have you seen anything in Dimitri Bivol that you can exploit? Yeah, loads. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lyndon Arthur. Let's bring in the WBA World Light Heavyweight Champion, Dimitri Bivol. It's been a while since we've seen you. We saw the, the fight with Canelo. We saw the brilliant fight with Gilberto Ramirez as well. And you've been away. You must be itching to get back in there. <clears throat> First of all, hello, everyone. And I want to say thank you for Saudi Arabia and Turkey as sheikh for making this uh, incredible event and I'm glad to be a part of this uh, event. Mm. What about uh, my fight? Of course I'm uh, glad that I'm coming back in the ring because uh, I'm really missed to fight and uh, I want to say thank you uh, to the team of uh, Linder Arthur that he took this fight uh, for this moment, for today, I think this is the, mm, the best uh, opponent for me uh, in the light heavyweight division. What have you seen of Lyndon Arthur? Uh, I, I know that he's, uh, he has good uh, boxing skills, uh, he has his discipline, and uh, he's the champion, I, IBO champion, world champion. And what do you want to show the fans December 23rd? What, what do you want them to say about Dimitri Bivol? Uh, please repeat. But what, what will fans say about you on December 23rd? <clears throat> you know, I just wanna went. Uh, I just wanna go to the ring and show uh, Dimitri Bivol. I wanna show uh, boxing skills. Uh, I wanna. I wanna make good fight. I wanna and I want to move forward to my goal. Thank you very much, Dimitri. We look Thank forward you. to that one. Let's continue back in the heavyweight division where we've got an unbeaten IBF world mandatory challenger, Filip Hergovic, risking his status against the heavy-handed Mark Damori from Australia. This fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions and Seller. Uh, let's start with Mark Damori. Mark, you have been uh, unbeaten in the last six years. It's uh, 11 wins on the bounce. Big chance for you to shine on December 23rd. Yeah, I've got 11 wins in a row, 10 by knockout, and I'm aware that they haven't been the same class as Filip Hergovic. I've watched his career. I'm, I'm very aware he's very talented. He hits hard. He's got a good chin. But any human being that I fight, I'm going to try and rupture his spleen. I'm going to attack his body. And I'm not going to sit on the end of his jab and try and win a 12-round fight against a guy of that height looking for a very violent first four rounds and what will be what will be, but I'm there to try and fight and I'm there to try and expose something. And I'm very aware he's a very good, strong fighter. I watched him, but I'm there to try. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try in those first four rounds and let those hands fly and see what can happen. What would a win for Mark Damori mean? It, completely changed my career, my life, the money you could make in a rematch, the money for the next fight, the confidence it would have in myself, in the way I could tell my kids, my grandkids, what I did with my career. That's how much respect I have for Philip Hergovic, but also I know my personality. I know when that bell goes, respect finishes, and you want to win. It's your nature. We're all gunslingers. None of us here want to be accountants or you know, librarians. We're here to fight. We love it. We love the money, don't get me wrong, but we're here because we love to fight. Respect Philip, but I'll let my hands go. All right, thank you, Mark. Let's bring in the man they call El Animal, unbeaten heavyweight contender, Philip Hergovic. Philip, this is a big, big night, and you've referred to yourself as the next heavyweight champion. Is this a chance to show everyone that you are all about business? Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank his Excellency, Mr. Uh, Turkey, for giving me this great opportunity. Thanks to the government of Saudi Arabia to putting this great night for boxing. I'm glad to be part of that. Very excited. And I'm glad that my opponent is also very excited. So I, I hope so we put, put up 
good good performance and give give to the fans what they want to see. Well, you are the IBF mandatory. You are next in line. Um, who do you want to win that fight out of Fury and Usyk, and who do you think will win that fight? Yeah, I'm next in the line for the heavyweight championship of the world, and uh, I'll fight the winner of uh, Usyk against Fury, or if they vacate the title, uh, if they want to do a rematch, I'll fight the next uh, best rank a ranked uh, contender on the IBF rankings, and that will be the winner of uh, fight Joshua against Wallen. So next year will be interesting. We'll see what, what will happen, but I'm looking forward to big fights. Thank you very much, Philip. Frank, I'm just going to bring you in here. Uh, it's another fantastic you know, heavyweight in the mix here in Philip Hergovic, and there could be some big nights coming up for him in Riyadh. Give, it, give us your thoughts. Look, he's, uh, he's got a win over Zhang, um, and he does, he's in the number one position. So he, does, he can't afford to lose this fight. He wants to get a crack at the world title. He's got to win the fight. Um, he's very capable, undefeated. And I think it's going to be quite interesting. I think it's going to be a really interesting fight. And whatever happens next year, again, he will be involved in quality of quality fights. There's no doubt about that. He's got to keep winning. If he keeps winning, he will get his shot at the title. No doubt about it. Thank you, Frank. Let's keep it moving. In the heavyweight division, we've got a very, very intriguing fight here between Britain's hard-hitting former WBA heavyweight champion Daniel Dubois against America's <clears throat> loud, outspoken, unbeaten and brash Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Uh, this fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions and Seller in association with Salita Promotions. Now, before we speak to the fighters, let's hear from the promoters. I'll bring in one of the hardest working promoters out there in Dimitri Salita. Um, Jarrell Miller is a, a guy that you have been backing for a long time now. He, he's right behind you there as well. Uh, big chance to remind the world what Big Baby's about. Thank you. First of all, we're very grateful to participate in this event and I'm very grateful to, to uh, his Excellency and to Queensborough, it's been a great honor to work with you guys. I've been saying this for a long time, Jarrell has the skills, the personality uh, to be one of the best heavyweights in the world. This is a big step in that direction, and I believe he's going to be explosive, sensational, exciting, and victorious on December 23rd. How do you see this fight going? Because Daniel Dubois, you know, in his last fight, he boxed Usyk. There's a lot of controversy around that fight. Jarrell Miller, I don't know if he's boxed at that level yet, but how, tell us how you, you break down this fight. I think Daniel Dubois is a very talented fighter. He has shown that uh, he's hungry, he's, he has a lot of power, he wants to win, but Jarrell's tenacity, his size, his power, uh, I believe is, gonna, is, go, is going to be his key to victory. And uh, Jarrell, with an impressive victory, fits himself right in to the big fights with Anthony Joshua, the winner of Tyson Fury versus Usyk, Deontay Wilder, etc. He is an elite heavyweight, and uh, I believe it's just a matter of time until he reestablishes himself as that and December 23rd is a big step in that direction. Thank you, Dimitri. We'll come back to you um, when we're talking about Otto Valin. I'll bring in Frank Warren here. You are Daniel Dubois' promoter. This is Daniel's first fight since that Alexander Rusik fight, and you would be forgiven for maybe uh, an easy touch, but you, in front of you, you've got a 300-pound pressure fighter who's unbeaten and, and coming to take Daniel's head off. Uh, tell us your thoughts. Look, Daniel needs a fight. He needs a tough fight. He's got to go out there and show everybody what he's about. You know, he, he was that much away from becoming world champion. You know, I'm not going all to the controversy again, but he, you know he can punch. And there's been some doubters out there. We believe in him. He believes in himself. So he's got to get out there now and show what he's all about. He's a young man. And this is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm with the greatest respect to all you fellas. You, you know, a lot of them are getting older. He's a young guy. He's got a big, he's got a big, big opportunity here to, 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 on this stage, to show that he can do it and what he's all about. And I've got faith in him to do it. And obviously, you're going to speak to him yourself and ask him. But he cannot afford now to slip up. This is, this is it. 
This is, a, this is a big moment in time, and we're going to find out what Daniel Dubois is all about. Thank you, Frank. Well, let's bring in Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Um, we are going to find out what Daniel Dubois is all about on December 23rd. Are we going to find out what you're all about? First of all, I want to say, uh, you know, we got to wake this crowd up. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you, Brother Turkey, for putting on this event. Frank Warren, George, for uh, working diligently behind the scene and making it happen. Brother Spencer Brown for really putting this together. And um, thank you, Daniel Dubois, for being the dummy to sign the contract because I'm going to beat your ass. Um, listen, man, proof is in the pudding. When I, I talk that shit, but I back it up every time. So whether it's with kickboxing or boxing, I'm going in there and I'm going to rip his head off. You know, it's the same we have in New York. I mean, if you don't like Vulcan, let's cover your ear. We smell bitch in them. And once the bitch is in you, it ain't going nowhere. He quit against Joy Joyce. He got beat up and knocked out by a jab by Usek. And those are small guys. I mean, Joy Joyce is big, but he ain't big baby big. So I'm telling you something. When you find a mean guy like me that's throwing 80 punches around, got a good chin, don't quit, come forward. I'm kicking his ass, and I'm sending him to early retirement, plain and simple. Okay, well, let's... Uh, Ask let's your actually, mama, too. Let's actually bring in uh, Daniel Dubois here. Daniel, you've just heard a lot of comments there. He says he's going to kick your ass. Uh, he's talked about doing all sorts of things to you on December 23rd. How does that sound? I'm excited for it. You know, this is it. Big time boxing, baby. I want to chop that tree down, and that's, that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, Jarrell, what do you think of Daniel Dubois? Oh, man. If shit had a twin, it'd be his face. It's plain and simple. I mean, listen, bro. I, like I said before, we could talk the talk and walk the walk. I talk and I back it up. Like I said, I think the his new trainer put the battery in his back, try to motivate him to get in there with the likes of me. You know what I mean? He was scared to fight Joseph Parker. I heard Joseph Parker move too much for him, so he don't want to chase him around. So he thought because I'm inactive, he's going to fight a big guy like me. But I come forward, and I'm just mean, hungry. And like I said before, there's nothing he's going to do to me that's going to bother me. I'm going to hit him with everything in the kitchen sink, and I'm going to send him back to his trainer, and I'm going to tell him, I told you so. So listen, plain and simple, come December 21st, I'm going to kick your stuttery ass. Watch. Uh, Daniel, any response to that? That's Bring quite it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm Bring ready for it. I'm motivated for this fight. And, you know, after that fight and the emotions that that fight stirred up in me, I'm up for it. And I want to really go go. You're going to make him pay? Hey? You're going to make him pay for it? Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's what we want. His promoter got to hype him up because he over there. He's stealing a bag of chips over there, boy. <laughs> Listen, man, I'll tell you right now, man, I'm going to fry your ass. Anybody, once I kick his behind, I'm going to buy everybody fish and chips in here. Bet my word on that. And, Frank, we're going to talk long term. Don't worry after I cook your boy. I feel bad for you for putting that money behind that dude. It's a wrap. We will see. Jarrell, I've just got one more for you because you have a kind of hostility with a, a number of heavyweights. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen recent things with Deontay Wilder. Of course, you were scheduled at one point to fight Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say to anyone else up here? Oh, they can all kiss my black ass, Deontay and AJ. <laughs> I don't like none of them motherfuckers, you know what I'm trying to say? But one thing I can tell you is that after I finish with du Dubois, I definitely want Manuel Chark because he got that belt. Them dudes got losses, and there ain't nothing over there with the, for them belts right now. But I tell you one thing, though. We all know for a fact that AJ don't want no smoke with Deontay. Shut the fuck up. And even though... Don't start with even, me, you know. Even though... Yeah. Listen, Miller, don't start with me. Even though... You know, I'll come over listen, there and slap you, and I see you brought your mum here I again. I kick your ass last I time. see you brought your mum here again, because you need a rampage. Boy, shut up. You're don't not built like that. that. But like I was saying, we all know that AJ don't want clown. no smoke with Deontay. As, as much as I don't like Deontay, I know Deontay will put that motherfucker in the grave. So let's make... I'll make it easy for you. Either you can fight Deontay and go to the grave, or fight me and go to the hospital. Either way, you can get your ass whooped. So pick your poison. So let's stop all that talking. Take Eddie Hearn them out your ass and pick somebody that really can fight. Either me or Deontay, one of us Americans, whoop your ass. So stop running over you, your English you, muffin. You are not doing listen, nothing. Listen, bro. To listen, bro. You softening baby shit. You are not shit. doing nothing to me. Watch your you, mouth. You let my little cousin Miller, Eddie Reese Watch your mouth. Me. You softening watch baby your mouth. shit. Stop running from me. Stop running from Deontay. Man the fuck up and fight somebody with a heartbeat, bro. Shut up. But Daniel, du Daniel Dubois has got to stop this. We can't have it, Daniel. <laughs> Tell him, you're not going to let him do this, Daniel. Daniel, anything to say? Not, oi, not, oi. not right now, <laughs> but we're going to keep things moving. Thank you very much, Jarrell Miller. Um, and you're Joshua. welcome. We're, we're going to start talking about your fight now as well. Um, of course, 
One of the co-main events on December 23rd pits the former two-time unified world heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua, not against Jarrell Miller. He is taking on Fuck Otto, Miller. <laughs> Otto Valin. Man, kiss my black ass. <laughs> but, but I do think he will fight Miller one day. You ain't my promoter to judge what I'm going to do in my career. And he is taking on Otto Valin on December 23rd. The fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, Frank Warren's Queensbury Promotions, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions, AJ Boxing and Seller in association with Salita Promotions. Let's bring in Dimitri Salita. Uh, Otto Valin, your man, is in a tremendous position right now in the rankings. Uh, and he's got this chance now again against Anthony Joshua here. Tell us what you're thinking about this fight. Well, Otto Whalen has shown his world-class ability versus his incredible fight with Tyson Fury. He stayed busy. He's been working with his excellent trainer, one of the best teachers in the game, Joey Gamash, perfecting his craft and coming off his last win against uh, Murad Kassib, which was very impressive. I believe that Otto has the skills, the confidence uh, to, to, uh, to win this big fight. Thank you, Dimitri. Let's bring in Eddie Hearn here, Anthony Joshua's promoter. Eddie, you have been with Anthony every step of the way. And now the next fight is against a, a southpaw who's coming off a, a great win. H how are you feeling about this one? I think it's a, it's a very tough fight. I think it's a great fight. Hello to Dimitri, who, you know, fighters should know, like Otto Wall and Dimitri Salita has been trying to land this fight for years against Anthony Joshua. After every fight that AJ's had, Dimitri phones me. What about Otto Wallin? You know, we saw him in a great fight with Tyson Fury. I think and not a lot of people know even about his victory on the road against Gassiev in Russia just a few weeks ago. It was a massive win for him. We respect him. He's well schooled. He's six foot six. He's a, he's a good southpaw, but we see something different from AJ now. You know, I think the plan at the start of this year was to box three times when he was unified world heavyweight champion. The, the politics, the mandatories led to a lot of inactivity. He boxed in April, he boxed in August. And now he boxes in December. I think, you know, and I'm, I'm definitely biased, but I believe that there's the best chapter to write yet in the story of Anthony Joshua. You know, what he's given to this sport. He sold out arenas at Wembley Stadium, Millennium Stadium, Madison Square Gardens, Riyadh before. This is his third fight in Saudi Arabia. He's changed a complete face of boxing. And it's a pleasure to go back. And, and you know, when we had the approach from his Excellency, to bring Anthony Joshua to Saudi Arabia. It was a fight and a challenge that he wants to take. He wants to become world heavyweight champion again. I believe he can do it. And I think you're going to see a destructive performance from him. And uh, I like what I see up here at the press conference. You know, no games, no mucking around. Business on December 23rd, move forward. We know there's another great heavyweight there in Deontay Wilder. That's a massive fight to potentially bring to Saudi Arabia in 2024. Philip Hergovic down there, the IBF number one. Otto Wilde in his IBF number two. This lines up everything for Anthony Joshua, one of the biggest fights of his career. And as I said, the, the greatest chapter in the story of Anthony Joshua yet to write. And I can't wait to see him shine on December 23rd. Thank you very much, Eddie Hearn. Let's bring in Otto Valin here. I mean, Otto, as Eddie mentioned there, you've got that win over Morat Gassiev, which maybe went under the radar a bit, but it was a tremendous win. Uh, your tail must be high right now. You must have all the confidence in the world heading into this fight. Yeah, I want to say thank you to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for putting on this show. It's really unbelievable what they've done in one week with all these fighters. This is a huge event, and I'm so happy to be part of it. So thank you very much, and thanks to Queensbury and Frank Warren that we dealt with. We got the call one week ago, my manager Jolene and I, we spoke about this fight. We thought it made sense. We went back and forth with Joshua's side. We came to a conclusion in two days, maybe. And so it was an easy fight to make for us. And I'm so happy. I just came off the great win with Gassiev. It was uh, five, six weeks ago now. I did not expect to fight once more this year, but this is really amazing. I'm coming off of that win. I'm in a great position. I'm a promotional free agent. I'm ranked number two with the IBF. So I'm really on top of the world getting this fight. I'm so ready for it. I've been waiting for it for a long time. And I'm just so happy and blessed to be in this position. You've boxed before in the amateurs. Anthony Joshua won that fight. You've sparred countless rounds as well. Can you take anything away from what you already learned about Anthony Joshua? Well, I think we both have a good idea of each other. I think that 
I fought him when I first started boxing, pretty much. I didn't have many fights, he didn't have many fights. We fought, I lost a close decision. We fought again a couple years after, England versus Sweden. He won a close decision again. Then we sparred in 2016 before he fought Charles Martin. And I think, honestly, Joshua, he was on his way up. He was, he's a very good fighter. He was a very good fighter at that time also. And, you know, I pretty much feel like he had his peak maybe around 2018. Uh, Joshua, he deserves a lot of respect. He's done a lot for himself. He comes from humble beginnings that really conquered the division for some time. But now I feel like he's on his way down, on his way out, and I'm going to help him with that, and I'm going to win this fight. All right, well, let's bring in former two-time unified world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Anthony, you are an iconic knight, a historic knight. You're no stranger to these sorts of nights. Tell us your feelings heading into this one. Why isn't Eddie asking me questions? You're my promoter. Feel Eddie, free. would you like to ask course, Anthony a question? Um, thank you. AJ, a massive <laughs> moment for you. Six weeks what out. You? Yep. People talking about you've peaked. People talking about this might be... People talking about our peaked have never even seen what a peak looks like in their whole career. So I don't know what they're talking about, number one. Secondly, I want to thank... His Highness Turkey and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for putting a phenomenal card together. And um, I'm looking forward to delivering my message to Otto Wallin on December 23rd. Obviously this time around, short notice, three fights in one year. That was the plan when we set yeah. off for 2023. Yeah. You're going to deliver that and it could lead to a huge 2024. But everybody talking about future fights, just purely focused on Otto Wallin December 23rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't predict the future, but... I know where I want to go, I know what I want to do, and I'm sticking to that plan. I set our plan at the start of this year, and I'm sticking to that. I'm a man of my word. I stand firm on what I believe, and I believe I'm going to be three-time heavyweight champion of the world. And my first stop to that in getting in the rankings is putting on a demolishing job against Otto Wallin. And finally, sorry, Dev. Finally, <laughs> crack on. <laughs> your third fight in Saudi Arabia, back to Riyadh. I know every time you've been, it's been an incredible Phenomenal. experience. Incredible Riyadh season we yeah. saw a breathtaking production, an event with Fury against Ngannou. Yeah. Excited to get back to the kingdom. 100%. When my family heard we was going back to Saudi, my phone started ringing off. When can we get tickets? When can we book flights? They get treated real nice when they go there. I'm focused on my fight, of course, but my whole family, my community is going to be out there. There's going to be a hundred of us strong, and um, it's going to be a really good time to be in Saudi Arabia. So if this is the first time you're hearing it, make sure you get booked up to head out to Saudi Arabia December 23rd. It's going to be big, and I don't think we've ever seen a card like this before. And just definitely, finally, when we sat down in that meeting with His Excellency, just on Monday night, the vision that we saw, the passion that we saw for boxing, something that we all share. 100%. So this isn't a one-stop shop. This is what I like about the vision is that there's a map, a road map with checkpoints, and I can't wait to get to the final destination. So as I said, this is my first stop. And um, December 23rd, I'll deliver that message and I'll be on my way again onto the next bigger and better opportunity in 2024. I'm fully focused on this fight. I'm determined to win, and I'm determined to get back to my peak, if that's what they want to call it. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Eddie. I think all those questions I had written down here anyway, Eddie, so well, I, think, I think we're good. I think we covered it. Uh, let's talk about the co-main event on December 23rd. A fight between two former world heavyweight champions, the, the long reigning former WBC world heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder taking on former WBO world heavyweight champion Joseph Parker. Now the fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions and Seller in association with Bomb Squad and Duco Events. Now, firstly, I'm going to bring in Shelley Finkel here, the, the, the long-time manager of Deontay Wilder. Uh, Shelley, great to have you. Fans have been crying out for the return of Deontay Wilder, and it's finally here on a big, big stage. Um, if anyone knows me, they know I do not speak long. My fighters do this, the speaking in the ring. Evander Holofield, just before the Buster Douglas fight, said to me, Shelley, how come you don't talk on loud like some other people? I said, they don't pay me for that, they pay you. And he went out and did the job with Buster Douglas. There was no reason for me to speak. 
This incredible card, we should all thank His Excellency for putting it together with, of course, the promoters here, um, Matchroom and um, Queensberry. When you look at what everything up here is, there's nothing I could say that would top this. So I will turn it back over to you. Thank you very much, Shelley Finkel. Let's bring in Joseph Parker. Uh, Joseph, you had a very clear mission statement at the Battle of the Baddest at the event just a few weeks ago in Riyadh. You wanted to look good, you wanted to get the win, and you wanted to get out in December. Tick, tick, tick. Here you are. Your reward is Deontay Wilder. Tell us your thoughts. Uh, firstly, thank you to those involved for putting on this event. Excellency um, Spencer Brown, Queensbury, trainers, Andy Lee, George Locker for the work that we've done so far, and big man Tyson Fury for all his help. And uh, we've made a decision at the beginning of the year to keep busy. And this is the fourth fight in the year. And it's a fight that really excites me. I'm excited for this fight. You know, I, throughout my career, I've never uh, went away from big fights and big opportunity. And this fight with Wada, I'm ready for it. You know, I, I know we're here doing what we need to do, but I can't wait to get back into camp and put in work for this fight. I respect Wilder, respect uh, Malik Scott, his trainer, and everything that they've done in boxing, but he is in my way. I know what I can do, and I'm here to win. And Joseph, you have been in camps with Tyson Fury, who was preparing for Deontay Wilder. What have you taken from those camps, if anything? You know, I rely on Andy Lee, my trainer, to give me um, advice and to come up with a plan. But Tyson has a lot of um, advice as well and knowledge on Deontay Wilder, being the person to beat him, also fighting him three times. So I am going to lean on Tyson Fury in this camp. Well, look, one of Tyson's advantages was he was, he was just so big. He, he may be 50 pounds heavier at times. What are your advantages over Deontay Wilder? So you're going to see, you're going to see December 23. I feel like in my career, it sort of went down a bit, but I got a spark back, you know, and I'm going to come in with a lot of movement, a lot of speed. What was that? Lights out. Okay. I think nice. said lights out. For you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joseph. Let's bring in Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, it's, it's, as I said to Shelley, it's been so long since we've seen you. I think we've seen about three minutes in a, in a few years. You must be so uh, ready to come back and show the world what you can do. Tell us. Um, it's been a journey. First off, hello, everyone. It's been a journey uh, for me. I'm very excited to be here on today. Um, what, max, what a magnificent card that we have. We have so many so many warriors on this card, you know, um, it's, it's, it's overwhelming to be in the same room with so many, so many other fighters, you know. Um, some you done had in camp, some you done competed against, and some you're looking forward to in the future to, to compete against. And it's just a blessing to be able to have uh, so many promoters to come together, you know, um, Queensberry, um, Promotion, uh, Matchroom, and um, last but not least, your Excellency, um, I appreciate you guys so much, you know, and 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 the staff and put this that put this magnificent card together, and I'm just ready to go, you know. Um, when people come to see heavyweight boxing, they come to see excitement, but most of all, they come to see knockouts. And one thing for sure, you know, when I come, that's what I come to deliver, you know, and. Uh, Come December 23rd, I'm coming to do the same thing. I'm on the same mission, you know, to regain my title back and um, to um, unify the division. That's my main goal. I got everything I want to need in life, but to come back and to finish what I started, it's going to mean everything to me. To just put that, that little icing on the cake with everything else that I've accomplished, the statue that I have, and um, many more things that will come in the future. What do you think of Joseph Parker? This is a fight that was talked about a few years ago when you were WBC world champion, he was WBO world champion. It could have been a unification at that time. You were linked mm. to fight then. What, what do you think of him? Well, many times throughout my career, I had many, well, I didn't have the opportunity to, to have unification fights. 
I've delivered opportunity to guys, but the energy hasn't been returned back to me for various of reason. But you know, God is good at the end of the day. And with Joseph Parker, you know, um, I think highly of him. He's a he's an amazing human being, you know, as a man, and uh, he's a great fighter as well. And it's going to be uh, a remarkable feeling to finally be able to share the ring with him once and for all. Well, Deontay, I've heard you refer to your power as a blessing and a curse. What does that mean? I mean, it's a blessing because I have the, the ability to, to knock a single man out with one punch. You know, this is something that's been with me all my life, not something that's just been developed. And the curse has been that I'm able to do that. It allow people to shy away from me, to become fearful. Of, of, of what may happen, you know, when they when they fight against me, and sometimes that can be uh, harmful to the to the to the business of boxing, because as fans, they just want to see the best fight the best, no matter what, win, lose, or draw, and that's what it should be about. All these fighters up here, we're all warriors, and I always said all the time, and I'll forever say it to the end of me that we risk our lives for other entertainment, you know, and that right there is is. <laughs> That in itself is, is, is just, uh, man, it's just, you wouldn't know what it feels like unless you're in, the, in as a fighter and get in the ring, you know? Many people talk what they talk and they say what they say, but until you're able to get in the ring and see what that feels like and, and go through all the training and all the ups and downs that come with that and your personal life as well on top of that, it's a lot. It's a lot you have to deal with. It's a lot that you have to go through, but at the end of the day, man, you know, we do it for our fans, we do it for the love that we have for this business, and um, to take care of our families. One thing you said there, Deontay, you said about the power of being a blessing and a curse, you said it's a curse because it can make other heavyweights shy away from you. Do you think any heavyweights on these two tables have ever shied away from a you, fight with Deontay Wilder? You're so messy. But, uh, you know, hey, I don't really have to say much. Y'all done, y'all done heard me many, many times throughout the years. I've been saying and what I've been talking about or whatever. So I don't, I don't think that I really have to necessarily just, just call out anything or point out any, any, any names or whatever, you know, at this moment in time. At this moment in time, my mind is solely set on Joseph Parker. That's it. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Well, that, that, that is a question that uh, I actually have as well. Thank you, Derek Chisora. Um, do, do you plan on that's, knocking out Joseph Parker? And if so, which I mean, round? And Joseph, uh, you should be all ears here. That's what I come to do, you know? And um, that's my only mission to come to do. When I, when I look at the heavyweight division, that's what, you know, you know, win is a good thing. It's just like basketball, you know? I can shoot threes, I can shoot twos, but it ain't nothing like a dunk for me. You know, everybody different. Everybody got their own, you know, personal thing that they like to do, but that's what I'm known for. And not just in boxing, in real life as well, you know what I mean? So I just, I'm glad and I'm blessed to be able to bring it to something that means something. You know, it ain't just, just doing it for recreational. You know, we're doing it for a purpose, a reason. We, we, all of us uplift people, we motivate, and we inspire people. And that's what I want to continue to do, to uplift, motivate, and inspire. And if anybody get inf- ins- ins- inspiration off of me knocking people out and seeing that, the excitement, that's what I'm here to do, you know. Um, I mean well for everyone, but we have a job to do at the end of the day. One final thing, Deontay, look, a fight that you have been linked to for so many years. I understand Joseph Parker is your next fight, but I can't ignore that I have yourself there and I have Anthony Joshua here, a fight that has been linked for so long. You talked about having to get a plane to come over here and speak to Anthony Joshua. Do you have anything to say to him here at this press conference table? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to be in the same room with him, to see him um, face to face, you know. It's been a long time coming. I wish you nothing but the best, bro. And um, hopefully soon we can get it on in the ring and get the people what they want once and for all. But I wish you nothing but the best, even if it doesn't happen. But I, I believe it's gonna happen. I believe it will. It's about that time. But even if it don't, I wish you nothing but the best, nothing less. Thank you, Deontay. Okay, um, let's 
finish up with Frank Warren. Frank, uh, this has certainly whet the appetite here today. So many great fights coming up December 23rd. Give us your final thoughts. Well, look, this is a magnificent card. You've got these warriors on here. You know, some of the best fighters in the world. All the big, a lot of big guys here. And this is what it's all about. This is what big time boxing is all about. This is about giving the fights to the fans, making them happen and they're happening. And from this, hopefully some other fights that the fans want to see will happen. We've got the two best heavyweights in the world are going to be fighting for the unifi unifying the title fairly soon, and you'll hear more about that. In the meantime, you've got two guys here in Otto Wallin and in Joseph Parker who could upset the fight, well, I think which is the next fight everybody wants to see, and that's AJ and Deontay. That's the fight we want to see, but will it get ruined? Are these guys going to ruin everybody's dream of seeing that fight? I know these two fighters definitely want it and want to get it on, so we will see. Everything, everything is on the line with this. Everything is on the line. These are real, proper fights, proper challenges for everyone. And at the end of the day, as I always say, it'll be the fans who benefit. And his Excellency sitting over there, it is down to his vision, the vision that he had and the wherewithal to make this happen. And we, we, me as a boxing fan, I applaud him for it. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you to everyone who has joined us today and said their, their bit. And it's December 23rd. Did you want to say something else? One more thing, and I would say this because I'm his dad. And George Warren... And as Eddie said earlier, he's been, and, and all the guys up here, he's worked very hard with the team uh, behind the scenes, and uh, he doesn't like too much getting up front. He should do, because he does more than I do, that's for mm. sure. But anyway, this is going to be an event that everybody's going to be proud of, and he had a big part in it. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, George, as well. December 23rd, it is unprecedented. It is historic. It is unrivaled. We continue Riyadh season with the Day of Reckoning. Very shortly, we'll get a big group photo down the front here, and at this point, we would like to welcome to the stage the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh. Okay, so that concludes the press conference. We're going to have a big group photo down the bottom, as Dev said there, but I think there will be some face-offs as well. And Fabio, that got that got interesting in stages, didn't it? Particularly when Jarrell Miller started firing off. I know for a fact that when him and Anthony Joshua had to spend some time together before the fight that never happened, of course, in New York in, in 2019, it ended up being Andy Ruiz. I know that Joshua found him very hard work, that he really did push buttons. And, and you could see that mm. there, couldn't you? They're not fighting each other, but Miller, he got right underneath Anthony's skin. Yeah, I think um, he obviously, he, he came to get on him straight away. And he wasn't, he always, he, he did his bit with Dubar and then was happy to move on to AJ really. But he's, he's always been that kind of character to bring a bit of, bring a bit of spice to event and kind of, well, try and steal the show, I think. But, um, He's trying to get his way back in, but yeah, he, he did set off AJ a bit there, which is interesting to see from AJ as well, to be honest. Um, he's been a bit more vocal on his kind of, I think, truer feelings away towards other fighters in boxing and other people around the sport. So um, he's been, he's, he's got a lot more to go on about as, as time's gone on. Absolutely. I wasn't against it as I saw that unfolding. It's nice to see a bit of genuine bite on that top table. The photo being taken there, His Excellency Turki Al Sheikh in the centre there with Frank Warren, Shelley Finkel just in front of his man Deontay Wilder, Eddie Hearn there as well, touching distance away from Frank Warren, they've never met before, yeah. they've never met before, that's what we're told Fabio anyway. It's a really, it's a really interesting one to see all of those faces 
all lined up together on one stage. Like, you, you barely thought you'd get two or three of them together on the same card, let alone all of them lined up the way they are. And then and then you've got, you, you tip it off with seeing Eddie and Frank within touching distance as well. It's, um, it's, it's crazy to see what, what, what can happen when, when big people come with big ideas and, and want to put, want to put together really entertaining shows. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that photo just being broken up briefly, Anthony Joshua just strolling off to the left hand side of the stage. It kind of brought to mind almost that incredible photo we saw at the end of October. Yeah. And I know that you went to the dinner, the gala dinner the night before the fight. So you weren't there for very long, but you took your place there, had a look around. Joseph Parker was on that bill, of course, as well. And just the incredible names that were, were in attendance that night was, was something else, wasn't it? What was it like for you to be around all of that? Yeah, it was, it, I felt <laughs> when I, um, I got home to my friends and family and stuff, I said it almost felt like I felt like I, it was illegal for me to be there. Like I was I was next to I had like Cristiano Ronaldo over my shoulder to my left, Mike Tyson to my right and just all of these names and faces. And I was like, how you take a second to look around and go, how is one have all of these people ended up in the same place? Like, why have they all got here? But then why am I here as well? I was like, <laughs> I was quite high up and I was like shuffled in next to all of these names. And I was like, I don't think I should be allowed to be within touching distance of some of these people. I don't know how this has managed to happen, but it was a surreal picture, something I think very historic for boxing to see all of those, all of those faces, all of those names in one picture. I think someone actually totaled up all like of the um, of the wins and losses, like the records of all the fighters on there. I think it was over like a thousand wins in like maybe thirty odd losses or something like that. It was something crazy, but it was a, a real special moment. That was especially for me at that week. That is something that will will stay with me forever. Conversation going on between these two. Wallen maybe taking a page out of Gerald Miller's book and seeing if he can see if he can get under his skin, see if he can aggravate AJ a bit. Maybe he's sensed that he's a bit on edge, a bit twitchy from from the altercation with from Miller on the in the press conference, and maybe he's trying to have a go himself. Wallen's come in in very buoyant mood. He had plenty to say to Joshua. It's very articulate, Otto Wallen. I met him quite a long time ago now when he was boxing on Saul and Nordic fight nights. I remember having a conversation with Joey Gamash about him. And he said that he had some really good basic tools and that he could go far. And it was quite interesting to hear him say to Joshua, basically, I think you've peaked and you're going down the other side of the hill. That's, that's quite bold. And here's Terrell Miller up against Daniel Dubois. In terms of a talk off, there was only ever going to be one winner there, wasn't there really? Because Jarrell Miller has got a lot to say and he's pretty accomplished at saying it. They're two very, very different characters when it comes to being vocal, especially on, on a stage in front of a camera on a, on a press conference. So, yeah, there was only ever going to be one winner that time around. But it's very different when you get on the ring on the night, as, um, as a lot of people have found out that it's all fun and games being able to talk up and say this and that. but. The only thing that really matters is the fight on the night. Daniel Dubois resplendent in his black tie. Jarrell Miller, as mentioned, was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua back in 2019, but tested positive for a number of banned substances and has done so again since then. So here is Ellis Zorro and Jay Opataya. As we were saying before, this is obviously a very difficult task for 
Ellis Zorro. Kept quite close counsel, didn't he, on the top table. Didn't say too much. Upper tire is a guy who is who is bursting with confidence. If you're Ellis Zorro, what I find about fighters is that you are all very realistic. You have an acceptance of what can happen in the boxing ring because if you don't, if you live in denial, that's a dangerous yeah, thing. Definitely. He's got to strike this difficult balance, Ellis, hasn't he, between being realistic and knowing the threat in front of him, but also believing that he can actually win. Yeah, you have to have a bit of both, don't you? You, you always have to be mindful of your opponent, of your level versus their level. And look, Jay Uptai has obviously reached different heights compared to, to Ellis, but that in itself does not mean that he can't win the fight, that he's that he hasn't got a chance in the fight at all. And I think that's the belief in himself that he thinks, look, I, all I need is my one opportunity, my one shot and to do this. Because we've seen it, especially, especially in boxing, is something you see time and time again, is that the kind of the almost Cinderella story of the man that comes out of nowhere and gets the win that he was never expected to get. Andy Ruiz for a prime example. It can be done. Lyndon Arthur finds himself in a similar situation against Dimitri Pivol. As Andy Lee pointed out, Lyndon Arthur has operated at a, at a good level. He's IBO champion. He's been in with Anthony Yard a couple of times. Obviously, got the win the first time around. But Pivol, by most people's reckoning, was either him or Baturbiev. Obviously, they have all four belts. They're the two top guys in that division. But the job he did on, on Canelo Bivol really took him to, a, to another level. I enjoyed hearing from Mark Demori, I must admit, mm. who's fighting Philip Hergovic because he said, look, you know, I'm always looking to try and puncture people's spleens or, yeah, or something along those lines. Quite descriptive. <laughs> it was, it was. <laughs> it, was very, it was very vivid, wasn't it? But as he said, you get these opportunities. And what he's not going to do is wake up the next morning and wonder what might have happened if he let his hands go. He's not going to do that. Yeah, I think with him, at least, you, you know that he's just going to put it all on the line. However which way, if he needs to stick it on him and, and turn it into some sort of fire fight, again, it's a, it's a realisation of your level compared to your opponents, but still the self-belief of, hey, look, I can do a job here. I just need the right chance and the right moment and it can get done. Well, what he's not looking to do is take too many risks at the minute, Hergovic, because he's got that IBF mandatory spot that he's waiting for as he outlined on the top table joining us Ellis Zorro we were just talking about the about the the task that you've got on, on, on hand on December the 23rd against Jay Opatire we know about him we know the reputation he's got we know the performance he put in against Jordan Thompson I mean Fabio was just saying in boxing you all have to have this realization or acceptance as fighters of what can happen in there there's no point living in denial particularly in the heavier weight you've got to strike that balance between knowing the threat he poses but believing in yourself. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm just not giving it that much thought. You know, two arms, two legs at the end of the day. I'm not overlooking him or like underlooking him or whatever like that. I know what he brings to the table. You know, I'm 31 years old. This is why I'm in the sport. You know, I'm a prize fighter. You know, the card doesn't get any bigger than this. It's a big opportunity for me and I think it will bring the best out of me, to be honest. And that's probably, I think, the best way to go about this is this has come together at fairly short notice. And sometimes that's not a bad thing, is it? Because, as you say yourself there, you don't want to be obsessing about things too much. Yeah, literally, I found out five days ago. Um, and like I said, I can't express enough. It's just a boxing match at the end of the day. Um, I've got six weeks notice, so I'll put all the work in in camp and that's it. You see, this is why I'm not a boxer. It's one of the many reasons why I'm not a boxer because I like to go, I like to obsess about things and go and go far too deep. But 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 yeah, I think I think that's a sensible policy. Darrell Miller joins us um, on, on the edge of the on the end of the desk there. Darrell, you can always be relied upon. Uh, you can always be relied upon to to rile people up. I was <laughs> going to say, yeah, but that, that that'll do just as nicely yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at press conferences, and, and and that's exactly what happened there. Were you a little bit surprised that that people bit in the way that they did? No, you gotta understand with boxing, like like my man Dave Warley just said here, it's entertainment, you know, but you know, I'm a real fighter in and out of the ring, I'm a warrior and I can smell fear on somebody. So this saying little things to pick, pick AJ off, and I knew that from the beginning that he's trying to be a persona, so he's really not. And I know how to get under people's skin and I'm always gonna be able to do that. So until he mans up and fight me one day, I'm gonna do it every time I see him. I'm just that kind of guy, I'm a bully, 24-7, all day, all night. So with regards to Daniel Dubois, you, you, you mentioned it there. You mentioned the Joyce fight. You mentioned the way the fight finished against Alexander Usyk. Correct. Do, do you feel that that is a weakness in his in his boxing Most DNA, definitely. if you I like? Think, I think I can ask any fighter that, you know. Um, I think I can ask any fighter that. I can ask a combo champ right here. Do we see Dubois' weakness as a quitter? 
<laughs> there's, there's been, no, there's been some moments where as a fighter, you may look at that as if you was his opponent, you would look at that as a weakness. There's been some moments. See, there you go. Point, 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 point taken. It's certain things you just don't do as a fighter, man. You got to go on your shield, you get dropped, you get a broken jaw, you get up, you keep fighting. The boy doesn't have that in him. And he's fighting a guy that's 330 pounds that comes for 80 punches around and goes to the body like hell. So, like I said, come December 23rd, I'm going to put his lights out and send his ass home. And in terms of those two fights at the, at the top of the card, Wilder against Barker and Joshua against Wallin, do you feel that Otto Wallin is a dangerous fight for Joshua? Most definitely. I've sparred Otto Wallin plenty of times over the years. Um, you know, he, he moves very fundamental, knows the boxing ring, good general um, ringship. He's not a quitter. You know, he's not he's not a Daniel Dubois. He's going to come to fight. He doesn't have one punch knockout power, but he's very doable, has a good jab. And like I said, he shows gen, um, ring generalship. So I don't think AJ picked off an easy fight with this guy. And we're going to see who who's the best man to win. But, you know, I'm rooting for Old Town because he trains in New York and he's a hometown guy too. So what about Wilder against Parker? Um, Parker's been nice and busy recently. He's got a new trainer in Andy Lee. They seem correct. to be getting along well. And, and he certainly thinks, Andy, that, that there's, the best is yet to come from Joseph. With Deontay, we all know about the power and the desire and, and the heart, basically. But yeah. he's been very inactive. Yeah, I mean, you guys said Deontay's very mental, too. You know, there's, there's times when we see... We see Deontay kind of mental, mentally meant down by the stuff that he does when he takes a, when he takes a loss. Um, I feel that Joseph Parker is faster, better boxer, but you know Deontay has that equalizer, which is that punching power. So you know I'm, I'm a Joseph Parker fan, you know. So I'm hoping for my brother Joseph Parker, but hey, the best man still wins in that fight. What do you make of his progress as a heavyweight these days? Oh, you know, you know, David Adelaide is like, is like my little brother. You know, he was training with me in Florida. It was heartbreaking to see that fight go the way it did. But like I said, you know, sometimes you have your day and sometimes other guy day. And I'm, I'm happy for him. I, I think he's doing really great. Um, and I hope he keeps progressing. And hopefully one day, if I'm still around, me and him get it on too. You know, and I can revenge <laughs> David's loss. But at this point right now, I got my hands full with David Dubois. And uh, I know um, your stable mates with, with uh, Dylan White as well mm -hmm. too. And, I, you know, I like the roster pasta himself. But uh, <laughs> hopefully Dylan will get off the couch and I get to whoop his ass too. <laughs> okay, what do you make of that? I think this might, might have given up the gun. Yes, guys, we'll go over this one. Um, yeah, look, he was he, obviously, you know David quite well. So he was obviously backing him going into the fight. But you always would. That's If that's your person, that's someone you've been around, you're always going to support them going into it so um I, don't know, I just did my job on the night and he's looking to do the same correct, against correct. against daniel my fellow countryman as well so look we're all boxers at the end of the day we're here to just do a job it's no big deal you win you lose you move up and you keep moving forward uh, okay I'm, i gotta recant on that one it's just, it's a job sometimes you win you sometimes you lose where i come from if i lose my whole block is gonna clown me so i can't go back to brooklyn with no losses bro i can't <laughs> Okay, well, we'll let you go. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Always thanks, entertaining. Uh, we'll you, catch you down the road in Saudi yes, in, sir, in, for uh, sure. Sounds in a good. few weeks' time. Jerome cool. Miller, thank you. Thanks Pleasure. very much for your company. Always interesting, isn't it, to speak to people who are further down the road than you? Mm. A, a lot has happened to him in his career. Not all of it good, uh, as I as I outlined mm. when we were looking at the the face-offs there. But I thought you did very well, actually, in Saudi when it came to the mind games aspect of things mm. with, with, with David Adelaide. <laughs> Sorry, Aha, Aha! So we have Deontay Wilder's Deontay Wilder's trainer is uh, has come to join us, Malik Scott. How are you doing, Ronald? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Great to see Deontay in the UK. The last time I saw him here, I was sitting just behind him at Wembley Stadium for um, Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko, and I was hoping at that point. That, that fight might get made and we would see the pair of them just across the road at, at Wembley before too long. They're on the same cards, not fighting each other. I mean, what are your initial thoughts on that? Um, the business of boxing took over as far as that aspect is concerned, but at the same time, they're trying to give the world, you could say the promoters and your excellency is even trying to give the world, you can say, a taste of what's coming. And what's coming is the biggest fights in the heavyweight division. This is, a, in my opinion, a very marquee second startup following the Fury and Gano. So people could look forward to, first things first, these guys, they, we have to handle Parker. Josh will have to handle Wilder. And then we could talk about really seeing, for a fact, Deontay Wilder knocking Anthony Joshua out. One thing I, I do wonder about, about any fighter when they're you know, moving into their 30s and their mid-30s, I was at that fight against Fury, the third fight. Yes. It, unbelievable fight. I mean, I just, I, I was I was gobsmacked by the whole thing, but particularly by, after what happened in the second fight, for Deontay to just come back seemingly like nothing had happened and just swing until his last breath was amazing. Yeah. 
But that can take a lot away from a fighter. I mean, well, how's he looking in the gym? Because he's only had one round since then. Mm. Uh, he's looking good in the gym, and, and, and I, I agree with you with that. But I, I would have to... Um, uh, the only thing I, I also believe concerning what you just said was I believe a multiple of fights like that, like that take a toll on a fighter. Uh, he had three fights with Fury. The first fight was a draw. The second fight, he took a, it took a toll on him. The third fight was another toll. But if you really look at it, Deontay Wilder, besides the Fury fights, he doesn't he hasn't taken that much, you can say, offense input, you know, concerning taking punishment that a lot of fighters take. So his body is still fresh. He's a young 38-year-old. He's the hardest punch in the history of the sport, which means a lot of his fights haven't gone the distance. So that means the wear and tear is not really on his body. It's just all about him staying disciplined and doing what he has to do. A lot of the, the question marks at the moment, I think, around Wilder will be the, the time out of the ring and under the lights, because we know it's a different feeling. The um, he's had He's had one round over quite a substantial amount of time compared to Parker, who's been in the ring quite a bit as of late. Is that any sort of, I wouldn't go as far as saying concern, but mm. is it a point you're looking at? Is, it, is there a way you're addressing that in any sense? Or The best way to address it, in my opinion, is um, not even in my opinion. To me, it's a natural fact that these fighters, even when they don't have fights coming up and the inactivity is kicking in from a business aspect, you gotta be training three, four or five times a week. Yeah. You have to stay active. And one thing about me, when a fighter is not in the gym, he still get boxing from me. So Deontay is all, we always talking about the crap, always strategizing. And when he's not on having the fights, he's training three to four times a week. And then when we get the call, and the call is suitable and the revenue makes sense and it's big time boxing like we're at now, then we back in the gym full speed like we're doing for December 23rd. He touched on it up on the stage, and it's something I'd, I'd love to ask him, actually, so hopefully he will he will make his way up here. But, but, but you too. He talked about, basically, the kind of mentality it takes to be a knockout merchant in the heavyweight division. Because boxing's dangerous, we know that. It takes a massive commitment. But to commit to that particular kind of Assassin's Creed, you might like to call it, ah. that's, an all, that's a whole other level. It's, it's, that, it's that acceptance almost of, I'm going to try and knock you out, you're going to try and knock me out, let's go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very particular thing, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you're dealing with dangerous, dangerous punches. Like, I, I would even say AJ is a dangerous punch. He's just not as a much dangerous punch as Deontay Wilder. And I judge that off of what I see Deontay do with 20 ounces on, 18 ounces on, and everything, and the damage he does to guys. So being in this noble art is a beautiful thing, but these fighters' life is on the line. That's why it's really hard for me to go to fight parties because I'm very defensive when it comes to people that don't box, talking trash about people that actually box because I'm very sensitive about boxers, you could say in that sense, and protecting the sport coming from a judging standpoint. But it's this noble art. It's the greatest show on earth, and it's either you get me or I get you. And whoever strategizes the most and stay disciplined and hold themselves accountable the most are the ones who usually see the light at the tunnel. And that's what we're looking forward to doing December 23rd, seeing a good light, another knockout violent light at the tunnel being distributed on Joseph Parker. How do you find that? I mean, you're, you're kind of early in your career, but you're at a very, very good level now. And it is that, it is that, it's, it, it is, acceptance is probably the right word. You, yeah. You're absolutely determined it's not going to be you, but it could be you. That's always the word I was going to use, was acceptance. You have to, even before you have your first ever fight, before you get in the ring the first ever time, you have to sit there and almost have a conversation with yourself and say, look, this could go south. I could be the one sparked out on mm. the floor. But I think the thing about boxers maybe that makes us a bit a bit different or... A, a little bit loose is that we we know that if we're the ones to get the win, it feels so much better. It's worth it's worth the risk. It's worth rolling the mm. dice and seeing how you come out. And for us as for us as fighters, for us as boxers, we live for that moment of, especially in my career or some of the fights I've had. The best moments you've seen for me are when they've been a bit tasty or when it's been a bit uncomfortable, and you that little switch goes in your head and you're like, okay, cool, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna double down now and put on a show. No, it's, it's, it's just, it, it, it's fascinating, that kind of ability to compartmentalise, if you like, to say to yourself, admit, this could happen to me, but by the same token, it's definitely not going to happen to me. It's just, it, it takes a very particular type of person to be able to do that, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, it, a lot of it depends on your preparation, your sacrifices and everything you gave up. The first time I met this young guy, young man, <laughs> it was in Ukraine. 
I don't know how many fights you had. How many fights you had around that time? I, I had about five or six five by professional then. Professional fights. Not a big amateur career. And he came there to box Alexander Usyk. After hmm. the first day I watched him box Alexander Usyk, I was very impressed. Years went on, years went on, and as you can see, he set the bar very high, not just for his opposition, but for himself. So I wanted to tell you because I'm just seeing you in person. I'm extremely proud. Appreciate of you, it, brother. brother. Thank Continue you. Continue to do what you do, and yeah, I'm extremely proud of you, man. <laughs> well, he turned up to that to that sparring camp with Usyk by himself. Which, which people don't generally do. You know, they yes, usually take it. I didn't know what to do. It was my yes. first one. I was like, they asked for me. I'm here. Yeah, Let's go. It was your first camp, wasn't it? Yeah, my first oh, one. Yeah, my yeah, first yeah. one. So I just, I rolled up and I just, I got stuck in. I think, uh, again, us as boxers and fighters, that's the best thing we're best at is just getting in and going, look, I'm going to figure this out as I go along. Mm -hmm. Just before we let you go, let's let's kind of veer things back to the 23rd of December. Yes. I could talk about this stuff all day. Yeah. Um, Parker, as we say, you know, he's a threat. You're not looking past him. You can't look past him. In terms of the whole card and the whole event, it's pretty extraordinary, isn't it, really? Because we thought we knew what was going to happen on December the 23rd. We thought it was Fury Usyk. We are going to get that, but not on that date. And this has all come together so quickly in a way that just never, never normally happens. Yeah. If the world was waiting on something and it wasn't going to happen, right? So we're going to say the world was waiting on Fury and Usyk, right? And that was something to look forward to. Well, to me, this is a perfect card, a beyond perfect card to let the world have something until they get to, to the fight that they really, really want. This card right here, it, it reminds me of the days of when um, a certain promoter used to throw big cards and eight and nine world championship fights used to be on one card. But in my opinion, this is better because it's basically all heavyweights. Bivol is on the card. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, the card is so big that people that may not even know about the card, they won't even know that he's on it because there's so many high-level names in the heavyweight division that's fighting each other. And um, I'm happy to be a part of it. I have the most dangerous man on the planet that's going to steal this show, and I'm looking forward to that December 23rd, which is, we all know, Deontay Wilder. Okay, Malik Scott, thanks very much. Thank you, brother. Very much enjoy talking yeah. to you. We'll, uh, we'll let you go. I'm sure you're in yes, high sir. demand elsewhere. Lots of media milling around here, as there will be for for a good amount of time yet before things wind up. And always fascinating to talk to the person who's going to have to strategize and come up with a plan. As we said before, you're the man in the arena. You're the one who has to try and execute it. But you need someone on your shoulder who you trust completely that what they're telling you is the right thing. And so you've got that aspect, which is the gym, and then you've got the other aspect, which is on the night, which, again, you know, you have to be absolutely confident in between rounds if things are looking a bit shaky that what they're telling you is the right thing. Yeah, I think that's why it's so crucial to not only have a, have a trainer or a coach that you, you think is, is good or knowledgeable or smart, but one that you trust as well, because ultimately I'm giving my life or, to you. And when I, when I step in that ring... Whether things go south and you maybe have to chuck the towel in or however, I have to trust that you care about me enough to put a, the game plan in place or to turn things on. <laughs> How you doing, bro? You okay, good? so Daniel Dubois. I have to trust you that you've, you've put things together enough that, hey, if things go south, you've still got my back in there. That's it. That's it. It's a, there's a huge burden of responsibility on traders, to be, to be honest with you. So Daniel Dubois. Oh, yeah. That got quite interesting, didn't it? Uh, were you expecting that? Jarrell Miller is, of course is not. Of you are. You have to, isn't it? He's that type of guy, and um, he's come over. He's not going to be quiet. He has to talk the talk. So come that's all good, man. Hey. Just, just move slightly closer to us. It didn't seem to bother you at all. Nah, nah. I'm, I'm, I'm used to that now, and I'm in this game in a while now, you know. And I'm, I've gathered experience, and so now I need to put it to work and show that I've learned from certain things that have happened to me in my past, and you know, go out there and do the business. I mean, did what he said to you, I can't repeat it, but basically what he, he accused you of being a quitter, basically, Bitch. is what yeah, he did, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I mean, that's what <laughs> you said. It for it. It. You said it. Um, does that just wash off you? Or does it, does it, right does it, now, does it roll you up? I feel many different emotions, but I really, I can't wait for this fight. Most of all, I'm ready to go out there and let it all out because after the last fight and certain things that happened before the fight, I need to just wipe, you know, let it all out of me, all the frustration. So you got a lot of you saying you got a lot of built up frustrating energy and stuff that you need to allow after that last 
the, the yeah, unfortunately lost to Alexander Usyk. Yeah. But after that, there was some there was some talk. Arthur, a lot of people saying the same thing yeah, yeah. that Miller said out there. But you you want to go into this fight and I'm not at all prove them wrong. Yeah, or? not phased by nothing. It's this is boxing right now. I need to get in the mode and in killer mindset and just go out there to destroy him. And that's all that's all in my mind. Well, thanks very much. Thanks thank for joining you. us. We yeah, will catch you. you. We will catch well you down done, the road. Uh, Jay Opatia is just uh, just off camera. If he could just just step in and join us. How about Jay Opatia, oh, IPF Cruiserweight World Champion, putting his, his title on the line against Ellis Oro, taking this one like everybody on this card, pretty much at, at fairly short notice. We've seen you in London recently with that performance against Jordan Thompson. It, it was a long time out of the ring before that due to the, the double jaw fracture against Maris Breedis, which says a lot about the kind of fight that was and the kind of fighter you are. How much are you looking forward to this, basically? Man, I'm, I'm over the moon, bro. To be on an um, awesome card like this, packed with uh, awesome fighters, you know, I, I'm pumped, eh? I can't wait. 23rd of December, it's on. Let's go. And do you feel that this is the first kind of step you could take towards next year maybe securing those unifications that you want and showing everybody for absolutely certain who's boss? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, if it was up to me, I'd have a unification fight on, on the 23rd, but um, no one wanted to take it. Uh, we had Breedis, you know, who's, who's also a hard fight. I believe Breedis is a hard fight, but, um, you know, he, he denied the fight for the 23rd. He said he wouldn't be ready. So... They put someone else in front of me, so that's who I've got to take out. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm here on a mission. I'm here to win these fights. And, and yeah, next year I want to win the rest of the belts. Does it, does it feel really good, too, to be flying the flag for Australia? Because you look at Australian boxing yourself. You look at Tim Zhu. Uh, he's, he's flying high these days. And Maloney's, uh, George Cambosis, what he's achieved recently. The sports, you know, it's, it's doing well in Australia. For sure, man. It's a, it's a crazy feeling, you know, even being up there with all those big boys and then... You know, I'm just a little kid from Australia, I just grinded his ass off and now I'm up there, you know, but I always knew this time was coming. You know, I always knew these big fights were coming, fighting on these big cards. You know, I was just sitting up there rubbing my hand going, you know, it's about time I'm here. You know, I deserve to be here. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, honestly, man, I've got goosebumps. I'm excited to be a part of such a massive card, big platform, and I put on another show. Does it feel like a, because it's, it's, it's obvious that you've got a bit of a, a chip on the shoulder towards the, the boxing that you feel like you've been overlooked for a quite a time where you've got the skills to really deliver. Does it feel like a justification, vindication to be on a massive show like this and be a part of it, of a, a massive stage to try and showcase your abilities? Um, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a huge, uh, you know, platform to showcase my abilities. Um, you know, I, I, do ha I did have that chip on my shoulder coming into the last fight in London. Uh, but, um, you know, I've only fought twice with the world title. Mm. You know, I've, I won it and then I defended it once and now I'm on a massive card like this. So, you know, I'm training hard, I'm working hard and I'm performing well. So it's all just, it, everything's falling into place. It's kind of amazing your story really, because I, I, I saw you at the World Youth Championships in Armenia in 2012. Yeah. I, was at that, I was at that tournament. And then a few months later, you were at the Olympics. You weren't really old enough to go to the Olympics. I mm. think where well, you were because you were allowed to, yeah. but I think they changed the rules subsequently. Yeah, they've changed. You were 16 yeah. at the time, so I mean, you've been doing this a really long time at, at a very high level. Man, I've, I've been boxing my whole life. You know what I mean, and that's why I'm up there, bro. Like I'm about time. Mm. You know, I've been a young kid fighting at world championships. I've won world championships. I've just been waiting for this time, you know. I always knew these big world title fights were coming, defending titles, then fighting for unification fights. So it's just around the corner now, you know, and I can't wait. I'm excited. And there'll be a new experience as well, going to a, go to a different country to box it. Fabio will be able to tell you all about that. He was there at the at the end of October, and and what we noticed there, and it'll be the same in December, is the scale of the spectacle. The investment in the whole thing is mind blowing. To be honest with you, you'll you'll see it day by day during fight week. Mm. It, it is. It is. It's like nothing I'd ever, I'd ever seen before. I mean, is that something that you particularly look forward to? That will get the juices flowing even more. Man, I'm a fighter. All I focus about is fighting. You know what I mean? All the bells and whistles, all the, all everywhere. That's all the outside noise. I try not to look at. You know what I mean? I just focus on getting the job done. 23rd of December, and that's it. Are you a fighter that on when you when you get there, when you get through the fight week, will you? 
because it will be such a big event, it will be such a spectacle, will you allow yourself that little moment to look around and be like, yeah, I'm here, like I'm really, this is a this is a big moment for me to really soak in and give yourself that little bit of, yeah, hang on, I'm doing, I'm doing something well here. Or are you just playing focus all the way and then maybe after you give yourself a little pat on the back? Yeah. I know what you're talking about, you know, like I've rocked up to a few arenas and stuff, like even the OVR arena, you know, like uh, like I said, a little kid from the Central Coast back in Australia coming here, selling out OVO Stadium. It's a massive thing and sometimes I am like, wow, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I do the hard work. Yeah. I'm in the gym grinding. So I look around and I'm like, yeah, like I deserve this. I earn this. Yeah, it's you know hard what I mean? This, this shit ain't, this, I didn't just walk in here and it was just given, you know what I mean? I've been sacrificing my whole life to get here, you know what I mean? Fight, first fight at eight years old and have fought my whole life. So it's just about time, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I keep saying it, but I'm excited, you know? It's, it's a, I've been waiting for times like this for a long time. Okay, thanks very much. We'll, 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 uh, we'll let you go. Appreciate Great it. to talk to you. Uh, we'll, see you in the, we'll see you in a few weeks. Best of luck. Jail Pattaya, IBF Cruiserweight Champion. Frank Warren down there, just uh, holding court with the Assemble Press. Enjoyed himself up on the top table there, Frank. You know, he's, he's it, it was it was amazing in um, in Riyadh when, when you were there, when we were both there mm. last time for the grand entrances when we saw Frank Warren and, and Bob Arum stroll in side yeah. by side, two Hall of Fame promoters. And it, it was quite a visual, wasn't it? But they were both, again, just clear that this is something, this is something new. This is something that we haven't we haven't really seen before. And it just shows in this business, no matter how long you've been doing it, it could always surprise you. Yeah, boxing boxing can always come up with something new, just as when you kind of feel like you may have seen it. And in, in their cases, between Bob and Frank may have done it all at the same time, it can throw you something new. And I think maybe even both of them sat there for a second and went, oh, this is something, this is something a bit different. As they went through the fight week, as they saw how how big the the Saudis made the event and how much of a spectacle they made out of it I think they would have sat there themselves and gone actually this is even for me this is something new it was interesting talking to Jay Opatai there because sometimes you kind of see someone from a distance and you get a little bit of a take a little bit of a feeling on what you think they might be like and he, he wasn't wildly different from how I thought he would be but he's just got that mentality hasn't he whereby it's taken a long time for him to get here and he's not going to give it up. You know, people talk about when you become champion, you need to keep that challenger mentality. I don't feel like he's going to have a problem with that. No, he's a very, a very intense character as well. You can tell by the way when he speaks and he speaks about how long he's been boxing, how much he's done previously, how much he's earned it all. You can really feel it from him when he speaks that, hey, he's like, no, I know I've, look, I know I've just arrived in front of your eyes maybe. But I've been here, I've been doing this, and this is all well deserved for me. And you can feel that, feel that come across when he speaks. You absolutely can, you absolutely can. I'll just have a little look behind me to see who is still remaining in Wembley Arena. The backdrop there, absolutely sensational. It does remind me of a good few things that we saw during fight week over in Riyadh at the end of October. This has all been pulled together, as we've been saying, ad nauseam really, but you know, it bears repeating it very very short notice in in the ridiculously short amount of time really by mm. by normal standards and it's those co-main events that are getting most of the attention but there are lots of other good fights on the card as well but just interesting hearing earlier on from Malik Scott about how he feels Deontay Wilder has still got plenty left and I think it was a it's a very valid point he made actually which was that those two fights against Fury, two and three, I mean, one was 12 rounds. Fury, you know, the first fight was 12 rounds. But the second one, he, 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 he I'll say it quietly in case you can hear me, he took a hiding, <laughs> frankly, didn't he? And then in the third fight, you know, it was absolutely brutal stuff. And in the end, he, he collapsed through exhaustion in the 11th round. But that those are really the only two where it's been like that. And that's, I mean, that's true, isn't it? Yeah, he makes a fair point. That they, they are some of, the, some of the most recent fights. But I think the wear and tear takes the toll if it's consistent over time and over your career. You, there's certain fighters you see or you know their style is just wear their heart on the sleeve, put it all on the line, and you pretty much know that every fight they have, it's going to be a bit of a war. They're going to take some some damage of some sort that's going to be relatively long-lasting, whereas Wilder's not necessarily like that. He has had a few, but most times he's, he's well, he's got his opponents out and, and cleaned them out in pretty sharp fashion. 
he has, and he's just got this amazing kind of elasticity, hasn't he, whereby he can just sling shots in from all sorts of angles without seemingly loading up on anything uh, and carries the power right to the end of the punch as well. That, that, that's something that really that really stands out with him. It's, it's funny because when you look at boxing mechanics, it's, it can be quite an odd thing. And you're, you're not, in a way, you're not that dissimilar yourself. You kind of throw your hands when you're off balance a mm. bit sometimes and you're kind of in the wrong place. But when you land, that, that power's still there. I mean, it's kind of, some people, as we describe it in boxing, are naturally heavy-handed. I think you have some of that. Yeah, I mean, he it, definitely it, does. It carries I think you through. Do. I think we almost probably share some similarities. Like when we were speaking to Andy Lee about his uh, Wilder's overall style and the way he looks, it's quite unorthodox. And probably a bit a bit similar with myself, me starting from a not a, a strong amateur background at all. So picking up things along the way that aren't, orthodox or conventional but still being able to transfer that weight that power through the shot and it and it carry through and I think Wilder carries a lot of those properties as well because when you see him fight he throws shots from very interesting angles you might see um, and the way he goes about putting his work together can be sometimes very obscure and a bit different but when it lands they his opponents always very much know about it. 100% they do and, that, and that's what we expect to see when we head over to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia on December the 23rd. He's a man who supplies knockouts. He's done it his entire career. That's what he'll be looking to do to Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker will have other ideas. Anthony Joshua, fresh off a good knockout himself against Robert Hellenius. He felt like he needed that. He'll be looking to revisit that on Otto Wallin. Again, the Swedish fighter will have other ideas. There's plenty of other really good fights on the card as well. The day of reckoning heading our way on the 23rd of December. Well, thanks very much for your company. Thanks, Fabio. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure you. to chat to you for the last couple of hours or so. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We will catch you again next time.